101 East Victoria Street. And Mr. Sharp is aware of that project. Uh, that's the one that will be referred to Jaime Limon, but it's actually continued two weeks. Okay. I just wanted to make sure everything was, was covered. It is. It's covered. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, I just knew that the staff came in, had concerns, and I wanted to make sure that everything okay. was done right. That, that, let's move on then. Um, any abstentions or um, step, stepping down on those items, on consent items? Suiting steps down on item C, 330 State Street. Pardon? I'm going to get that. Is there a motion to approve or ratify the consent calendar? Lavoy. Boucher, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Three. And who was stepping down? I'm stepping down on item C. Item C? Oh, for yes. 330 State I Street. Thank you. Okay, moving on to announcements. Ms. Gantz, any announcements that you'd like to make? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see here. Item one. Today's agenda, public hearing for landmark designation of 105 on Terre Hills Road has been indefinitely, is it indefinite? Yeah. Postponed at the owner's request. Um, and then there are going to be two AIA sponsored charrettes taking place July 16th and July 23rd. Those are Saturdays um, to be, to focus on density in the downtown. And the location and exact times of those um, two charrettes will be provided to you at the next meeting. But I wanted to let you know now so that maybe you could get it on your calendars if you desire to attend. So that was um, July 16th and July 23rd. And I, and I believe Mr. Jacobus has an announcement. Yeah, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, I just want to let you know that I received the uh, mural relocation plan for 34 West Victoria. And I know that. Not all of you are, are necessarily going to want to be concerned on reading this, but I have a few copies if someone would like to see it. Um, basically, it's, uh, it appears to be a good plan, and we've covered all the bases, and we will also give one to Fermina, Bill, Chair. And <coughs> Louise, would you like one also? Basically, what the, what the plan does is it how they're going to remove the mural from the building, which is actually on solid concrete. And so they, they were going to lose one row of the tiles around the perimeter where they use a sawzall to actually cut the sections out. The sections will be moved. Um, and then uh, we, some missing tiles or, or tile replacements will be replaced. But I, I believe most of the tile is still pretty, pretty intact. And um, if they follow this plan, they should be able to move the, move the mural without any further damage to it and apply it to the new, it's a new site, which is essentially around the corner. Sorry. Ms. Gantz. I forgot. I have one more um, little thing here. I guess members of the public sometimes are wondering why the HLC meeting cuts off uh, on certain, during yes. certain televised live broadcasts. And that's because the Parks and Rec Commission meeting is, uh, is broadcast at the beginning at 4 p.m. on the um, third Wednesday, I think. Fourth Wednesday, fourth. the fourth Wednesday of each month, and it conflicts with HLC. So, just so the public knows, it's the fourth Wednesday of the month. HLC only is broadcast up to 4 p.m., and then it's, they switch it over. Yes, they switch it over to the Parks and Rec. That's the live. And the you can, live hearings. You can always watch the rebroadcast. You can watch the re you may watch the rebroadcast, and you can also go to your computer and pull it up there. So, thank you. Okay. Any other announcements, Commissioner Drury? PM. Let's hope it doesn't get to that. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Commissioner Murray is leaving at five. Okay. Move on to the next item. Subcommittee reports. Any commissioners have any reports on their Mr. respective Chair. subcommittees? Mr. Commissioner Arias, microphone, please. <clears throat> it's on. Okay. Um, my understanding is that on the 28th of this month, the request of our, 
uh, subcommittee or sub on the um, historic element for the general plan will go before the council. Great. I have not heard of a time or a firm confirmation that from staff or anybody that, uh, but I've been told that it's the 28th. And it would be very helpful if as many people could come to speak in favor of this element as possible. I don't have a time. The also the next meeting of our little sub task force on the, the uh, uh, historic element of the general plan will be um, July 6th. And Vermina, uh, do you remember the time? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is 11 o'clock. Yeah, I think uh, at the conference room again. 11 o'clock at yeah. the conference room. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, then moving on to the first item, which will be item number two, 1214 State Street. It's a public hearing. I believe Mr. Jacobus will be filling us in on that. We also have some public comment. Sure. Just to keep people entertained, this is a public hearing to consider adoption of a resolution to recommend to City Council that the structure known as the Granada Tower be designated as a city landmark. Would you like me to read anything else? Okay, I'm buying us time here. Uh, we just actually uh, switched our computer system overnight to a more, uh, a more upgraded uh, version, and so we're all having lovely computer difficulties, and we're just trying to roll with the punches as best as we can. I'm sure it will be all for the better in the future. Okay, the first item up, up is the uh, designation request for the Granada Tower. Um, as you all know and reviewed the plans for, this was a massive uh, rehabilitation project of the theater and, um, and, the t and the reuse of the tower building. Um, the theater doesn't qualify for designation because it's been significantly altered, although uh, compatible with the, the material choice of materials in the back, it's just not historically significant. Uh, so then we looked at designating the tower. And even with the tower, because there's been so much alteration to the back of the tower and to the sides of the tower, the designation subcommittee decided to, and I think very wisely, designate the facade. So what we're going to be looking at is this facade that you see here, and then there's a historic 1924 picture to show you, and 15 feet down the north and south side walls so that we can pick up the plane of the roof above the parapet. And that's pretty much where all the architectural details are concentrated on this building. This building was built with the intent of having other buildings eventually right up against it pretty much on three sides. And so there wasn't a lot of time spent on the details for the side and rear, ele rear elevations. Um, here we see, oh, here we see a, a, a close-up of the marquee. Now, the marquee is a replacement. It's not original yeah. to the building. And it was not exactly duplicated from the historic photographs which we have showing the marquee. Um, it picks up some of the major elements, but it's not an exact copy. However, because it is attached to the front of the building, uh, we do want to include it as part of the designation, even though it's not individually historically significant. If 50 years from now, uh, if the building's still standing, then it would be. And also, the front doors, originally there was some um, discussion and staff wanted to put the original front door, style front doors back in, which were solid wood. Um, but the, th the theater group wanted to have the ability for people to see into the theater. And when the, when the theater uh, doors were open, actually see down inside the theater. And so they wanted the glass doors. And eventually, the HLC did approve them. So we'll be including them as part of the designation. But they're not historic material. And if they ever want to come back and uh, replicate the wood doors, I'm sure this commission would be more than happy to. Uh, take that into consideration. Again, here's a, a picture showing that the uh, marquee uh, in its original form. Uh, the Granada <coughs> has um, 
while I'm being a controversial building in the city because this is the city's first, first and only skyscraper. Um, at the time, definition of a skyscraper was any building to, of eight stories or greater, which had an elevator. Interestingly enough, uh, even the Romans had the ability to build buildings, you know, very tall, as evidenced by the Colosseum. But their apartment house, apartment blocks, were never more than six stories high because they were determined that's the maximum amount of flights a person would want to walk. So, um, six stories was considered not it was not considered a skyscraper because they weren't elevator buildings. So this one just just makes the cut. So that gives it the the interest uh, to the, to the uh, to the city as being the only skyscraper. Also, this building was built in 1924, but the original plans were put out in 1922. And one year earlier, Pearl Chase, Bernhard Hoffman, and the Arts and Planning Committee were trying to set it, you know, to set a put a set of guidelines into motion which would create sort of New Spain in America, you know, sort of the Andalusian village that that, that they were looking for, which this building obviously isn't because it's got the uh, the more um, Renaissance feel to it, and it's also got a a, a hint of Beaux Arts in that it's tri it's tripartite uh, facade, which resembles having the, the, the base, the, the shaft, and the capital of a column. Um, so this building was controversial from the start. It's still a bit controversial, but um, I think that controversiality gives it some significance that it lacks in some of the other uh, features that we normally look for as a, as a landmark structure. So uh, the, archi the architect was A.B. Rosenthal. Uh, he was not particularly noteworthy. He did a lot of commercial buildings in Los Angeles, none of which are particularly of any significance. Uh, however, the engineer was Edward Mayberry. He was a, he was a significant architect and engineer. Uh, he worked with George Washington Smith on some projects, including the Libero here in town. And um, so so he, he does have some significance on his own. So basically, and we do we do have the uh, staff. Um, report that you have, which is basically a short synopsis of the, the history, of the history of the building. We do have the original structures report, which determined that the building was historically significant, landmark worthy, and that's available if you have any specific questions. The findings of significance you see above, I won't read through them all because we have time reasons, but they, uh, they come out of the MEA document, and these are the four that it meets. And so uh, staff's recommendation is that the council, that the, that the uh, HLC make the recommendation that council adopt by reading of title only a resolution of the council in the city of Santa Barbara designating the Granada Tower State Street facade at 1214 State Street and have the APN numbers listed as a city landmark. With that, Mr. Chair, I turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Do we have any applicant? Okay. Um, I will open public comment. I have one member of the public wishing to speak, and that would be Mary Louise Days. Ms. Days. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Please state your name. Mary Louise Days, uh, speaking as a citizen of the city, oh. um, not representing any group. Um, I have great reservations about this uh, designation proposal. The Granada Building, uh, I look on the term Granada Tower as a real estate term that's being used since there were uh, large condominiums converted. Um, it was not considered significant enough to be in our El Pueblo Viejo book um, of uh, a number of years ago. And David uh, Gebhard, architectural historian, uh, did not consider it something that really represented uh, the Santa Barbara that was uh, proposed, designed uh, in the 1920s. Uh, Jake made a reference to uh, Mr. Hoffman and Mr. Jace. And of course, the, the zoning ordinance um, this was, was built during a gap in, in the very early zoning ordinances. The uh, er, early, uh, one of the early ordinances did allow six stories for a while, and then it, and that was changed to four as a maximum. But the, um, the only significant uh, parts are the, the uh, parts of the facade, the, the terracotta embellishment. Uh, I feel that the any designation uh, would be better as a structure of merit. Um, the uh, APN numbers uh, are what legally what uh, 
signify what a designation is. And I think there were three mentioned, and perhaps the three of those are including the, the side. Um, as Jake pointed out, the, the very expensive uh, theater work was a almost a complete reconstruction. The auditorium was gutted. Um, that is not worthy of, of uh, designation. Uh, I also feel that um, naming this a landmark could be interpreted as endorsing an eight-story building because landmark designation is our highest um, level of designation. Um, and it's, it has to in include historical and architectural significance. I really foresee that any list prepared would make it appear that the whole building is a landmark, not just the facade. I think that's what the, the, the public would interpret. And Jake just explained that even parts of the facade are not, not original, have been uh, heavily remodeled. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Dace. Um, no other members of the public wishing to speak. I'll close public comment and bring questions to the board. I have one, two questions, if I may. Um, what's happening with the painted sign on the top of the building? If you could go back to the circa 1924. <coughs> you can faintly see it. <coughs> and it's still there today. What happens with that? Is that included in the designation? No, because we're only including the, the State Street facade and 15 feet. Right. However, that. Why would it not be included in the designation? <coughs> I, I don't have an answer for that other okay. than we were looking at the, the details on the facade, but. Uh, Just a second, let me. Mr. Jacobs, you finished? Yeah, so we've okay. got something to say. Ms. Boucher? Um, the ownership of this building has been split between the theater and the quote unquote tower, uh -huh. uh, which makes that sign actually uh, an off site sign. Technically, yes. yes. But do we have any idea of how long that sign has been on the building? As long well, as I can remember. As, as, long, me as long as the building was built, because it was. Um, so wouldn't that by de facto make it some historic element? Yeah, I believe it could. If you want, if you, if initially I was initially I was looking at designating the entire tower. You know, I know. We could, yeah. we could take that element, and then when I tried to break it down into a, a more palatable bite, you know, right there again we, we're going to get some conflict because we're going to pick up only the first couple letters of the sign. And you're right, the sign's been there since obviously since 1924, so it does have some significance in its own right. Um, and then the second question I have is um, what. Did, did you consider, was it considered that this be named a structure of merit as opposed to a landmark? Um, sort of taking into account what Ms. Days is talking about. It was part of the conditions of approval for the project and it was, the condition of approval was to landmark the building. Landmark, not just structure, not structure of merit right. or, or anything like that. Okay. Now, d during the, while well, the whole time that the building was being rehabilitated, I did have a sign on the marquee that said restoration project and every time I got in front of this commission and I got in front of a camera, basically I was saying, you know, let's be clear, it's a rehabilitation, it's a good rehabilitation. We got a great venue, but it was a rehabilitation, it was not a restoration because right. then the marquee would have been an exact copy of the original and the doors would be solid wood. Um, but it's, it's, it's one of those situations where it's the controversy of the building, as, as we're arguing now, it's the controversy of the building, which is, is much of what makes it significant so much as its architecture, because it's been controversial since the beginning. Any other commissioners have any questions? Yes, Mr. Commissioner Drury? A question for all in the room here. What happened to the, the, um, the stage curtain, the Spanish galleon? Does anybody know? The wonderful, that giant I think painting Commissioner Lavoie made a costume out of it. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> God, the, frival the frivolity <laughs> once again. Sorry. So nobody knows where that no. wonderful thing went. Okay, that was um, Mr. Jacobus. Is it, would it be, I'm, I'm all for this, by the way. Um, would it, is it necessary to include as part of the designation actually spelling out those, um, the other, North and South side walls. Does that need to be spelled out? Or is it, it is. Is it well, we need to, when we define the facade, if you, if you look at the building, and unfortunately, I apologize, that picture came out darker. If you actually go and stand at the, at, 
these sidewalks like a pedonia, there's about a two foot wraparound with a brick and a terracotta wraparound, and then it bulges out and stucco, and the rest of it's you know, the stucco. If it weren't for the roof, we could, we could use that as a, a very clear delineation point. The reason I came up with 15 feet is I estimated with the pitch of the roof angling back that we would pick up the roof as part of the facade. Um, we could choose to designate the building and both side walls, or uh, which the north and south wall, and not the rear wall, which has the major alterations of the staircase and some other things that happened mm -hmm. on the back. That might be one solution yeah. uh, to make it simple. I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to see that that uh, that sign Granada Theater is part of the designation also. That would be one way to do it. We designate the front facade and the two side, and ex exclude the rear facade, which has all the alterations. The Thank two you. sides all. Yeah, they, they, they've been altered also, the side elevations, but... Yeah. That's what I was questioning. Is it, is it possible, Mr. Jacobus? Are you finished? I'm, finished? I'm sorry. Is it possible, Mr. Jacobus, to do the 15 feet of the north and south side walls and the entire sign, painted sign, or would it be better to do the entire facade north and south? To include I, the sign, I, obviously. I think it would, in order to include the sign, it would probably be cleaner to include the, south, the north and south walls. But then I guess you have the issue of the north and south we walls being modified. We start picking up some insignificant material. Right. Um, one other option might be to, and uh, we've never done this, but um, I, I believe we can have historic signs, and maybe we could come yes, back with a, another request Layer to, of to actually designate the sign as being historic because it's been there since 1924. I see Fermina wincing a little bit, so maybe she would want to weigh in on that idea. Okay. Um, any other questions? Commissioner Schallenberger. Uh, so I'm just wondering functionally. Well, first I'd like to comment on the, um, the question that was just posed regarding the entire north and south wall. As a, I, I would, I would uh, suggest that the language, if we do go down that road, be just the sign because Functionally, in the future, I can see any changes to that facade being subject to the landmark designation. And I know currently the windows, for example, on those two facades need replacing. They're, they're, you're going to see that in the near future, I think. Um, and I, and, and the, I, I think um, it, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be an appropriate review at that point. The, the window should be able to be changed out without the landmark process. Uh, without being subject to the landmark process, um, like you said, it's not a it's not a significant material. It's just you know exposed board and back concrete. It's not there's nothing really significant about that. So I'm just thinking functionally. Um, uh, the second thing is on, on on the note of functionality. What 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 defines the facade? In other words, where does the plane start? I mean, the building, it, it undulates. It's not, it's not just a clean plane the entire way up. And you can see that it's, well, that's not really a good representative photo at this point, but um, balconies and th such. there are, it, it, I mean, in other words, is it the center of window glass towards State Street or is it inside face of wall towards State Street or I mean, what defines facade? In this case, it's all the material that faces State Street, whether it be the recessed doors, the marquee which projects out, or the main plane of the building. Because that's just a, I mean, it, that's just a skin. I mean, it's it's a veneer right. essentially. So, anything behind the veneer is well, it's like, is it's not like any subject. Of, if, if we landmark a building, we don't let, we don't have a provision in this city for landmarking interiors like we do in some other cities. So, right. if, let's say we landmark the whole tower. Let's just say that that was done. They would still not require HLC approval for any work that's done inside the tower. It would be the same with the facade. Anything done behind the facade wouldn't require landmark uh, approval. As far as replacing windows goes, uh, even if a building is a landmark, if you're replacing them like for like, meaning they're going to be exact duplicates of what was there, um, that can be done with a building permit because you're not changing materials. But if you change color, if you change colors, you change materials, then it would involve the HLC. And even if we, we just designate the facade. Because those side elevations are within close proximity to a city, if it gets approved, a city landmark, they would still receive uh, extra scrutiny. Any other questions? We kind of went into some comments there with Commissioner Schallenberger. So let's continue with comments. Anybody wish to comment? Yes, Commissioner Lavoie. Um, I, I 
believe that the doors and the marquee should be excluded, Agreed. specifically excluded from the designation. They are not historic material, nor are they reconstructions. Um, I think the designation should be more specific about the terracotta decoration as being the significant element, terracotta and brick decoration, um, storefronts, and roof form, and exclude the sidewalls in their entirety, including and especially the sign. <laughs> the sign is a remnant from billboard days, and we have worked very hard to eliminate billboards in the city. Do you remember the owl? I remember the owl. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I just want to clarify, Jacobus, to or, uh, clarify something with, with Bill. Mr. Um, like I said, when you look at the facade, there's about a two-foot return that keeps the terracotta and the brickwork. Would, we, would you be willing to, or, um, accepting to include that turn back, and then that could be the cutoff for the? Well, that's what I'm saying. Okay. The terracotta and brick Where be identified as the, the yeah. historic fabric, okay. excluding everything else. Okay. And this was going to be a warm and fuzzy day. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Uh, Mr. Chair. Commissioner um, Boucher. I would second what Mr. Lavoie has said. I think that would tighten it up nicely. Commissioner Drury. I would um, agree with Commissioner Lavoie on the the marquee, because that anything that was replacing that would have to come before us, I believe, in any case. But um, I disagree vehemently, vehemently with the removal of the sign or the loss of protection of that, that huge sign. Okay, I, I, I think I want a straw vote then on the, on the sign. Um, so the straw vote would be how many commissioners could support including the painted sign on the north and south walls as part of the landmark designation. How many of us could, in, <coughs> excuse me, could support inclusion of that? Four. Four. It's tied. Um, Question. Commissioner Arias, with your microphone. Thanks, the sign is very, very faint and hardly visible. Um, as long as it were to stay faint and not very visible, that's fine. But if it were to be repainted and things like this, then I would not. I would not like it, and I see this happening, and that's one of the things that bothers me. So if they were to do a restoration on the sign, that wouldn't be allowed? I wouldn't like to see it. Let, I'd let nature take its course. Yeah, I mean, it's a, valid, it's a valid approach, I think. Um, does that change any of the dissenters' minds? Uh, come on, little boy. Mr. Chair? Some examples of what she was just talking about, where signs are allowed to, to, to deteriorate over time. You've seen those, like the sides of brick buildings with the cigarette ads mm -hmm. and things on them. Sure. And actually, in a faded condition, they actually seem to have a lot more character than they would, they probably did when they were ever brand new. Same, same with the sign, because it's kind of faded. It just, you see it, but it's not, the, it's not in your face. You know. Um, you know it's, um, my sense is, uh, yeah. My sense is that the facade and the and the um, the fabric um, fabric of the building that um, Commissioner Lavoy spoke about, those are the uh, character defining worthy parts of the of the tower. the The form of the roof is important, but the sign itself is to me is not, uh, because it is r it, it it it's part of the days when they 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 did uh, put up. Uh, signs like that but it's not like I would think of let's say like the you know the seven up but, uh, place where that was like the the identifying icon that's what it is in this building it was more the front 
the facade, the original part, that, that was the draw. So, and also I don't uh, want to include the sides in, in the designation, so that also, obviously, if I, I, I would not want to include that. Therefore, I, I just don't think a, a loss of that sign would greatly reduce the, the status of the designation. Okay, Mr. Chair. Commissioner, I'd like to throw out Mr. Commissioner, I, 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 yes, I'm here, keep doing that to you. I'd like to throw out an idea. Uh, the whole purpose of this is it was part of the conditions of approval. The conditions of approval read that they shall apply for and not object to the city of Denmark in the building. Um, maybe what we need to do is to simplify this whole thing. Let's designate it. We can't do it today. We can, oh, have to set up a process. But let's perhaps designate it a structure of merit. And at the structure of merit level, we can just designate the, tow the whole tower as a structure of merit because that's a lesser designation. And it would be, I think it would just keep things a lot simpler. Um, like it was pointed I out, it wasn't, it's not necessarily in the, in the guidebook, but it may, it may be just a, a simpler way to get a designation on the building and, and make this commission feel more comfortable about doing so. I have another idea, and this, this may go to um, getting a sense of what the public feels, how the public feels about the sign. What if we were to um, designate the facade and the two-foot wraparound and the building form as a city landmark today, and then um, if someone such as me chooses to bring the sign, the painted sign, as before the commission as a sign of merit, <laughs> No, then <coughs> no, we do have historic signs. You do have historic yeah. signs. So maybe that's the way to separate this out and move forward today on this? Second. Oh. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, we had a motion. Yeah, let me just count for the motion first. We had a motion by Lavoie and a second by Sharp. Under discussion, Commissioner Schallenberg. No? Can we have the motion read? I the motion the is path. to designate the facade and the two-foot... Yes. We're not designating, we're recommending. I'm sorry, you're correct. Okay. You're correct. We are recommending to council that the um, facade of the Granada Tower and the two foot wraparound and the, and the building's roof form be designated as a city landmark. That is the motion. Was there a second to the motion? There was a second by Sharp. Oh, that's right. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, Mr. Chair, what I'll do is I'll redraft the, um, what is it? The, mo the resolution. The resolution, and I'll have that before okay. you next week so Great. you can approve it. And Thank you, Mr. Weeks. Jacobus. And moving on, sorry, we are behind schedule. The next item on the agenda is item number three. That is 320 West Pue Pueblo Street. And that is a public hearing to consider adoption of a resolution to recommend to City Council that the Morton Bay fig tree, located at the Cottage Hospital site, be designated as a city landmark. Mr. Chair? Mr. Jacobus. Yes, Commissioner. Oh, I was just going to make a motion. Okay, but then you're taking Mr. Oh, Jacobus's I'm thunder. Oh, I'm, s Actually, I'm sorry, I Jake. Got a lot of thunder from that last, last item. <laughs> um, essentially, uh, I'll, just do, I'll just keep this real short and sweet. Uh, this is the Morton Bay fig tree. You see that um, it's uh, positioned such that the hospital building currently wraps around it. Um, to, to familiarize with you where that is on Pueblo Street, that's where you'd go in for the uh, physical therapy, which I'm more than familiar with. Um, Kitty corner. If you look at this line. photograph here, this is looking the other direction. You can see the new wing of the hospital being constructed, an identical wing of, of that um, same style and architecture and spacing is going to be built around the tree on the other side, so there, there's going to be a recessed entry, th entry there. Um, the root system of this tree are just, you know, the, the massiveness of the trunk, it's, it's, just a, it's just a gorgeous tree. To show you where the tree is on the site, that's the, the red arrow there points to where this tree, tree is. And um, what was interesting is they, they use it as a sort of an outdoor space. The, on this particular day, they were doing a blood drive, and you see the blood mobile. Under the tree, they had s seating spaces for people that would come. They had a desk set up where they would sign in, and then they could sit and wait under this tree until it was their time to go in and give blood. And um, the hospital does use the tree for other events, um, outdoor events, because it's got such a wide uh, canopy on it. Um, 
Hopefully nothing controversial about this one. I'd really like to have this tree designated. Um, okay. Also, I'd like to Steph rec further recommends that the HLC motion include a recommendation that council place this tree on the city parks department historic trees list also. Okay. With that, Mr. Chair, I turn it over to you. Very well. Mr. Chair. No. Um, we believe we have an applicant. Mr. Oh. Cunningham, did you wish to speak? It's on. It was on. There you go. Bob Cunningham, Arcadia Studio Landscape Welcome. Architect for the project. Uh, I'm simply here to answer questions. Okay, the so manager. Commissioner Boucher. I was going to make a motion. Go for it. That we uh, recommend to the City Council that uh, they consider this tree as a city landmark and that it also be put on the parks. Parks Department Historic Trees List. Okay, we have a motion by Boucher. Second. Second, Second by Sharp. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. That Thank you. Stuffy. Moving <laughs> along rapidly, we have a historic structures report for 33 West Victoria Street. This is a structure of merit, the former First Baptist Church. This is a report prepared by Post Hazeltine Associates staff. Mr. Jacobus. I'm still looking for the warm and fuzzy, so let's see what we can get done on this one. The, one, the last one wasn't too bad. <laughs> I thought that was I great. I just wanted to point out that uh, at this first stage, what we're looking at is only the structures report, whether you agree with or disagree with or want any changes made to the structures report. The next item will be your actual review of the, the full-size plans where you can really get into the details. Okay. Um, this is a, a project that um, initially they brought plans forward to staff. Uh, we looked at what they were proposing and felt that there's just no way that it was going to get approved by the HLC. It was, um, I don't want to use the word in your face, but it was just too much detail, too much, uh, it almost re ran looked like a crenellated castle. So we said, we, you know, we had a meeting with them and we said, you know, think simplify. Look at some of the other elements, you know, that are normally associated with the sta stage fly and try and minimize it as much as possible. And I think they did a really good job of coming back with uh, the can't at the roof on the stage fly to minimize its impact so you don't really hardly see it from the street. And from the back, coincidentally, it actually resembles the roof over the, uh, the Soho, you know, so it kind of fits, fits with the, the, the back of the, um, the alley that it's in or the parking lot that it's in. And um, it's, the purpose of this is to give us another, yet another, uh, you know, certainly world-class um, venue for, for theater. So. Um, having said that, I've read the report. I agree with the recommendations and conclusions in the report. And we do have Post Hazeltine here to answer any specific questions that you have on the report. And with that, I turn it over to you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, Mr. Hazeltine, Ms. Post, did you have anything to add quickly? Uh, I think Jake uh, summed it up summed nicely. It up okay. Very nicely, yeah. Any questions from the commissioners? Commissioner LeBoy? There are no signs on this building, so. <laughs> Good thing so far. Well, there are actually. Well, yes. Um, uh, an excellent report. And, and, uh, Thank you. Re reading through it, I agreed with everything you said Thanks. until I looked at the architect's pictures, the architect's drawings. So that raised some questions. Um, two of them to the point, and, uh, and it's uh, in your discussion on page 33 of the impacts of the uh, flyway onto the building. Um, could you tell me where this shape of the roof appears on this building? Is, does it appear anyplace else? It gets to be more direct. Uh, in terms of the canted roof? Yeah, the, the, the barn-shaped roof. It, yeah, well, I think, uh, well, I think the idea was, as say, to um, because this was a very utilitarian uh, elevation, as always intended to be. So, when when uh, the uh, um, second, uh, let's say, addition was made in 1921, you know, there were uh, already structures with now, of course, a parking lot, uh, and uh, we felt that uh, the shape of the of the roof line um, would. Uh, coalesce much better, you know, with existing with lines, say, of the, which, the so, which is now the Soho now. Um, 
But that building isn't part of this building and in a very different style. No, that's true, you know, but we're just looking at, you know, sort of general massing and of the roof line in general. And, and we wanted to keep it, you know, uh, more utilitarian and more simplified. Does this roof form a pier in other Tudor revival buildings? It, it doesn't, um, but yeah. it's not a Tudor, the addition, that part of the building is not Tudor, Tudor revival. revival. It's very utilitarian. If the north end of the rear elevation is, doesn't have that type of detailing. It was very, as, as everyone knows that has seen it, it's very simple. Um, the standards do point out that additions should read differently than the original, and our concern, which I think was echoed by staff, was that in the end, if you added Tudor Revival detailing to the back, it would create some confusion about is that part of the historic fabric of the building? And two, it was sort of embellishing an elevation that had been very simple. And we thought the analogy was the Granada Theater, where the back has always been basically linear, planar brick walls, for instance. And there was never any attempt when the building was constructed to have some sort of architectural embellishment. embellishment. And it was a similar situation with this building. So we concurred with staff that making it, putting period revival detail on the addition would be working against the standards which want you to not add detailing that's not characteristic of you know that era on an addition, especially on one on a portion that didn't have those embellish yeah. embellishments originally. And, and it would give sort of a, in a sense a kind of a false sense of, of history that this never existed to begin with uh, and um, the utilitarian aspect of, of the uh, in many cases of buildings uh, are often, you know, kept very simplified, very, very utilitarian because they were never intended to be seen, you know, from the, necessarily from the public. Does that answer view. your question, Commissioner Lavoy? Yes. Okay, any other questions? Mr. Chair? Mr. Jacobus. I, I just wanted to further add for the public's point of view, you all know how to read plans, but a lot of people in the public don't necessarily know how to read them. The way that appears where you see that roof, uh, that stage fly uh, above, yeah, right there above the thing, that's set a significant distance back from the street, and so that would, for the folk benefit of the folks in the audience, that would not be seen as standing across the street looking at the right. building. It's, it's set significantly far back. Any other questions? Um, Commissioner Drury? This project isn't built yet, uh, 34 West Victoria, but would that, um, that uh, flight tower inter interfere with the view from the proposed condominiums on the uh, second or third floor of um, whatever that project is called, 34 West Victoria? Mr. Chair, I can answer that. Mr. Jacobus. Thank you. Damn it. I mean, I'm beginning to like this. But anyhow, um, it, it, it possibly could be in the view shed of some of the condominiums, but we don't protect private views in the city of Santa Barbara. Too bad. Mr. Sean Burger, is this the you. section you were talking about? Uh, no. 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 Okay, if you could, if you could pull that. It out for me. I got it, Schomber. Okay. Yeah. It, it does, it, you know, gives the relationship between the Arlington Theater, the proposed um, the Alma project, yeah, Alma something. Pueblo de Alma or something. And then the Victoria Theater. So this would be Victoria Street right here. Any other questions? Mr. Chair? Jacobus. I think that drawing shows um, what Peter was just uh, trying to illustrate to me is that there is a, a grade going up, so the, the condos are at an elevation that's a little bit higher. But if you look at the, the front facade of the, the theater, it's pretty much already as tall as the condos anyway. So I don't think that this is really going to do much, uh, change the, the view shed too much. 
Commissioner, what's your name? Boucher. <laughs> I think this is going to be extremely visible, however, from the parking lot. The section? Remember, we're responding to the, the report we're here. We're just so. questions right now. Yeah, exactly. So. I'm ready for comments after. Anyone else comments. have any questions about the report? Comments? We have public comments. Oh, beg your pardon. Thank you. Um, opening public comment, we have one member of the public wishing to speak so far, and that would be Mr. DeForest. If you could uh, keep your comments, comments and keep them short. Good afternoon, Kellum DeForest. Welcome. I d thank you. <laughs> I do not see how raising the height of a building or a portion of the height of a building uh, does not uh, impact uh, its uh, his historic uh, the nature, and uh, I would think that would. Just like the uh, uh, Granada, the r raising that rear certainly has taken away any historic merit to the center itself. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. Anybody else? See no one, I'll close public comment. Bring it back to the commission for discussion comments. Mr. Lavoy, I believe you had a comment. Uh, yes, um, I, I, I share Mr. Um, DeForest's concern that an addition of this size on a building could have no impact at all. Um, the other point is I see more of this building from the parking lot than I ever see it from Victoria Street yeah. um, and therefore consider it a significant elevation. Um, and, and important to the perception of this building. Um, also, um, the city, the HLC in practice has allowed or has designated buildings as structures of merit so that they could be added on to in a style compatible with the existing exemplary style. Um, and this was made a structure of merit due to its exemplary st and unusual style. And therefore, I consider this particular design unacceptable. And does and and as far as this report goes, does has a negative impact on this historic resource. Okay. Any other commissioners have anything to add to that? Commissioner Murray. Um, yes. First of all, I want to uh, um, say that I really like this report. I it was very thorough and excellent report and I also agree thoroughly that it should be a landmark building not a, not not just a structure of merit that was really well brought out because it's rising to that landmark level I too feel that the, the, the proposed fly tower is is not there it's not it's inappropriate um, in its in its style in its um, its height is 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 high. It's probably more about its style. Um, and I feel, although I, I do understand the Secretary of Interior standards, I just feel that because of the conflation of different, uh, the, the two different styles in on the building, um, it, it is just even more, um, um, more important for us to find a way to build the, the this, uh, this addition in the in, in in the best manner that we can, um, I do. Uh, although these are very uh, were hard there because they're small plants, it was hard for me to really see the really in, uh, investigate the the study views. Um, I and I'm looking forward to see the big plants. I just know that at this point, I, I just cannot support that addition especially now that the, the building is now has risen to the landmark level. Can you support the report? Uh, I can support the report, but I will just have to say that that section 
the analysis of the uh, of the flight tower is one part of it that I, I do disagree not uh, with? disagree with. Yes. You do disagree with it? Yeah, okay. but uh, the overall report, I can certainly then accept it. Uh, if there's no more questions or comments. And I also want to say that I am very, very pleased that this is uh, work uh, coming from the community, the, the, the theater. I support that fully. I'm also very, um, very uh, appreciative that uh, the, the, the front, the facade you know, on the uh, Victoria Street is not uh, altered. In fact, it's very minimal. So I support the addition of something, but I just certainly cannot support what is proposed at this point. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion. Commissioner Lavoy. To accept the report and disagreeing with the findings on page 33 of um, dealing with the impact of the design of the fly tower on the building. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Lavoy, second by Drury. Under discussion? Is the maker of the motion comfortable yes, with that amendment? Yes. Thank you for the correction. Okay. Do you know what the motion is? Staff. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Do you understand the motion? Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, acknowledging and thanking the, out, the preparers for an excellent report again. As usual. a chance to defend their findings I mean they, they've studied this in a hundred times more depth than I have that's personally. why I asked them if they understood the motion they concurred that okay. they did thank you okay um, moving on to the next item would be item number five same address 33 West Victoria Street this is comments only project requires City Council approval of a public works major encroachment permit for improvements within the Victoria Street right away also requires historic structure, historic resource findings, excuse me. Um, Mr. while uh, setting up, quick comment. Mr. Lawson? No, he's going to, before, he doesn't need them set up, I guess. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the uh, Commission, um, it's an unusual project where it will be HLC review, um, and uh, they're going to have to have a major encroachment permit that uh, Council will have to weigh in on. Um, so. What's going to happen is Public Works will take this council for a, um, a concept review and ask for their input on improvements uh, for access along Victoria. So any comments you have on that improvement um, along Victoria will help uh, Public Works when they go to council. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lawson. We have four applicants here. Would you state your names for the record? And if you are going to speak, keep it brief and to the point. So I'm Derek Weston. I'm a member of the board of directors of Ensemble Theater Company. And I'll tell you that Jonathan Fox, our artistic, our executive artistic director, uh, is here, as well as Steve Metch, who is on our board also. Okay. Sir? I'm Jason Curry with Phillips Metch Swimming Mall Architects. Okay. I'm Manisha Lakia Metch Metcalf. Bob Cunningham, Arcadia Studio. Thank you. What do you have proposed? Right, so you all are familiar with the report. And I think that now with the, with the report, you're familiar with the site. So maybe where I should start off with is why we want to do this fly loft and why it's important to this project. I've done a little diagram here which kind of compares on this side of the page the existing building. This is uh, a new sheet. Do we have additional copies? I have additional copies. You've been here before. <laughs> so, let's take these two off. 
because there's three additional sheets. So on this side of the sheet, we have the existing building. And on this side of the sheet, we have the proposed building, floor plan, and section. Um, from the report, you know that the existing building was designed originally as a church, um, and it started to become known as a theater in the early 80s. Even though it was called a theater and known as a theater, it really does not have the uh, technical requirements that make it a, a really um, professionally functioning theater. And the two main things are, in the, the section here, you can see that the ceiling above the stage is no higher than the opening of the proscenium. So there is no currently no fly space in the, this theater. As well, when we look at the floor plan, this is the proscenium opening, and the walls of the stage are basically right at the proscenium opening, and then towards the back of the stage, they even encroach onto the stage. So doesn't have any fly space currently and it doesn't have any wing space currently. So the the main goal in getting this building into a, a, a really professional theater is to give ourselves a, a really proper working stage house. What that means is clearing out all of the wing space so that we've got ample room for wing space at the stage area and it means giving ourselves a fly loft. Now um, in a, if we're starting brand new and uh, we didn't have any restrictions on height, we would want a fly loft in the, in the neighborhood of around 60 feet. Um, the rule of thumb is you take the, the proscenium opening and you give yourself two and a half times that height for flying scenery. We've really um, compressed everything so that we can get that down into a much more efficient height. This green line here is representing a piece of scenery in view of the audience and the red line it stored. So you see we're right down to just two times the proscenium opening. As well, we've taken a um, different approach with the rigging equipment. Typically it's, it's mounted up at the ceiling and you would need extra space for that equipment. We've taken that and mounted it onto the side, side wall of the stage house, um, so that we can reduce the height even a little bit more. With all due respect, would you um, please move on to changes to the exterior? Since our purview is really exterior, you gave a great description of why you're doing it. Now let's look at the meat of the exterior, place. So the way we started was um, we took a, a different approach at the, the beginning. We, we looked at the existing building and the existing tower that's at the corner of Chapala and Victoria Street, and we took some of the architectural detailing from this tower and kind of created our new tower on a simplified version of the, some of the elements from here. Um, after meeting with staff, they suggested a different approach where we really um, do something a lot more simple and it doesn't, something that doesn't attract attention to itself, it's more backdrop for the historic details. So that is the thinking that brought us to this design where we've really simplified that um, tower and made it kind of the backdrop to let the other architectural historic details um, come forward. Since you've, you've had a chance to look at that and um, you haven't had a chance to look at the other design, but I think some of your previous comments were heading in that direction, I did bring along those elevational studies. Sorry. Sorry. So, um, this, so these are new sheets. Doesn't have a sheet number. We weren't really, yeah, we weren't really um, we weren't planning on showing this. Okay, well then let's not talk about it. I think they should. Okay, they should. all right. I think they should. Go ahead. Uh, it's really a response to the, the comments on the structural, yeah. the historic yeah. structures report. So this is a view from Chapala Street looking across the parking lot. And this here is our, our new tower. Um, and really it's, it's kind of picking up some of the detailing that's along Chapala Street. We're picking up the pointed arch stained glass window shape and we're using that as our loading dock door. 
Um, we were taking some of the uh, ideas of the loading dock door of the Libero Theater, where you have kind of a, a giant order. Of, in that case, it's the wainscot. In this case, we're picking up the buttress details and kind of flanking it. Um, these were two of the existing windows, which we thought were original, except for the awnings, which we took off. Um, and they wouldn't be windows that you could that light would come through into the backstage area, but we would preserve the existing frame and leave them in place. And um, the top was squared off, which is really um, preferable for the rigging system anyways, and it picked up some of the step detail that's in these tower. The other views, this is from Victoria Street. Um, sorry, this is from the corner of Victoria and Chapala. And you can see we're really only picking up a corner of the, the Lala. So this, this is a little site plan, Chapal Street, Victoria Street, and the views from right there. This is a view from Victoria Street further towards State Street. So we're kind of in front of the existing entrance to the parking lot um, and looking down the east side of the building where we see a little bit of it popping up above where. Just compared to this view here. And in elevation, this is what that was. That's from that's from the Chapala Street parking lot. From the parking lot. Yes. Yeah, so this is the set elevation from the parking lot. Here's the east elevation, the the little alleyway between um, the building and the, the adjacent restaurant. Uh, the view from Victoria Street, which um, someone mentioned before, really you don't see this view. The um, sight line would be obscured from the front of the building from this view, but that's how it elevates. We're picking up a little bit of the louver details from the, um, the tower, the existing tower as well, up, up in here that could be um, a vent. So we are looking at what, like option B? Show us your preferred option. Yes, it is really up This is your preferred option, option. okay. Because rigging-wise, it makes it really okay. easy for us to do rigging. Uh -huh. In the option that we had before, we had to have rigging going diagonally and then going down to the sidewalks, which was making it more complicated and more expensive. Okay. Anything else you want to present? Front State Street design yeah. that we just... Let's go way back here to... Let's actually start right here on the existing photo. Um, we have a condition at the front of the building. This is a view from Victoria Street, and you can see along the sidewalk here, these are our, this is our main entrance to the theater. And right now there's a set of concrete stairs which go start immediately. These are the photos? It's in the beginning of the sheet. In the future, it would help to just number all your sheets for us, please. Definitely. That way we can refer to them in the minutes and there's no question. Okay. Uh, so the existing condition is a set of concrete stairs that goes right up to the entry doors without any landing at the entry doors. So that's um, a code problem for us in remodeling the building. We have to provide a landing outside of the door that's at the same level as, as the lobby. So our solution for that A104. This is a partial site plan of Victoria Street, and this is the that view of the sidewalk that we're looking at. Currently, these red dashed lines represent the existing concrete stairs that are coming right up to the door. This is the property line. So what we're proposing is to create a landing in the space of partially the existing concrete stair and a little bit of the existing sidewalk where we can have a level landing for our main exits. Um, we had originally thought of creating this landing uh, a little bit more generous out to the edge of the existing curb, which is right here, and taking over the parking lane to, to then the sidewalk out and bring it around, giving a, a full width of the sidewalk and then a generous landing. 
Um, we've gone through meetings with um, Public Works through um, preliminary review team comments, and we've we've brought that back to our minimum code required landing, and then providing the minimum through fare for sidewalk, uh, which meets the pedestrian guidelines, and keeping that within the, the line of the existing curve. So we've got about a seven foot landing, and then a, a six foot sidewalk. And what that also does, uh, this little landing connects to the courtyard and to the office portion of the building, and by putting a ramp on this side, that gives us accessible access to the building and the courtyard. So this landing, all this space here, is at the same elevation now as the lobby and the courtyard, which is a little bit uh, higher than the sidewalk, about a little less than two feet at this end. The sidewalk slopes down a little bit more than two feet at that end. So this is the elevation of that landing. Um, we're proposing a pretty simple concrete landing and then a uh, just a nicely detailed railing um, to separate. We don't actually have a code required guard rail until we get down to this end. Um, so that's why these pickets have a little bit um, wider spacing than a, what a guard rail would typically require. Um, we're also proposing some new landscaping and we have Bob Cunningham. Here. Mr. Cunningham, would you like to give a presentation? Um, Mr. Chair, it's, it's essentially a matter of moving the existing street trees. We'll be taking three out uh, and planting four, um, relocating from the back of the sidewalk to the base of the platform in front of the theater. There'll be four matching Queen Palms 12-foot trunks. Um, and we have reviewed this with uh, the city arborist. However, we haven't yet uh, taken this to uh, the Parks and Recreation Commission for approval of the street tree modifications, but the Queen Palm is a designated street tree. Presumably, we'll we'll get approval for that relocation. Um, Do you have photos of those trees? I believe we've got them in this package. The, the there are two fairly tall existing trees, uh, and there's one smaller one. It's a King Palm, a replacement for the previous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a queen to me, but you're there. There, there, there is a, a king palm somewhere along <laughs> okay. that, that we are removing. Uh, uh, essentially, we're we're going from, you know, what's currently inconsistent heights to a, a consistent frontage. However, you know, the trees are smaller than existing uh, on average. Uh, the remainder of the landscape is pretty simple, formal boxwood hedge, uh, in keeping with the formality of the building. Anything in any of your team wants to present before we move to public comment? Yes, I'd like to comment if I may. Mr. Weston. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, I think it's important to make sure that uh, the public knows the overall context in which we're making this request. So for some 20, 25 years, the city has had the ambition of completing a performing arts district that would include a large theater, a medium-sized theater, and a small intimate theater. Um, the Ar Arlington's obviously the large one. The Granada is 1,500 seats. This is a 300-seat theater. Uh, the Lobero is more than twice that size and is not right, right in the Performing Arts District. So we do believe that this project is important for the community. <coughs> it will be used about half of the year for productions by ensemble, but it will be available to all the performing arts and nonprofit groups at very, very affordable rates for the remaining half the nights of the year. So we think that overall, uh, you know, putting aesthetic uh, questions aside, we think that the project will make a very important contribution to the community. Uh, it's important to um, emphasize that the building is in bad need of repair. We have a structural report that identified significant problems. Um, they will be very expensive to repair. We can only justify doing this in the context of making a correctly, fully functioning theater. It really is non-functioning at the moment. I, I, I won't ask Mr. Fox to come up, but I can tell you that um, with no ability to raise anything beyond the stage, with inadequate light, with inadequate sight lines, inadequate sound, a really, really cramped lobby, a, a code violating steps. I mean, the building does not function very well today as a theater. Our capital improvements, just the hard kind of board and nail and architectural capital improvements will be well over $5 million. We will address all of the structural uh, problems with the building. 
one way to look at it is that this is preserving the life of a building that we think has historical merit and it is really facing some serious problems today. So nobody can invest this kind of money unless we can make it a functioning uh, theater at the same time. So we have tried to work very, very sensitively with staff. Uh, we've been at this some, some four months to try to make sure that this is done as sensitively as possible. We did focus on the front facade as the most critical element and have tried to find a solution to the frankly dangerous step situation that, that respects the building. I can't speak for the historians, but I, it's my understanding that there may even have been a landing outside the building at one time. So this landing proposal, it's the minimum that meets code, it complies with the city's sidewalk requirements, and it doesn't alter any of the proportions of the facade, which we think is critical. So we've tried to design the stage loft, the absolute minimum that's possible. We brought it down extensively. We originally had the uh, drawing that is our plan B, which uh, we thought was handsome, working with staff. We developed this alternative pro uh, proposal, which, which has the uh, shed roof uh, aspect. We're happy to do either one. Um, personally, I'm not an architect, I'm just an attorney. Personally, I like plan B, but um, what is important is that we end up with a functioning theater. And I think the l s certainly it has impact on the back. Nobody can say it's invisible because it isn't. Um, so I respect your concerns. It is also true, I believe, that the most important historical aspect of the building is the front. The back is really unadorned at the moment. So the plan that uh, PMSM has developed, our plan B, really makes the back harmonious with the rest of the building and handsome. So we're happy to do that. We're happy to do plan A. Um, if we can't get approval for a stage loft, to be really honest, I think the building itself is in, in jeopardy because it, it has some significant structural problems. The owners even closed the building for six months out of concern over structural um, uh, change. Okay, wind up. So the, the depth of the high part is the absolute minimum, the height is the absolute minimum, and we're willing to slope the side. We hope that you will consider very carefully helping us find a way to do this because we think it's good for the building and good for um, the city and that it preserves the most critical aspects of historical importance. Thank you, Mr. West. And thank you. Mr. Chair. I apologize. Just, Just real quick, us. there's one thing that he, he needed to include. They don't have use of the basement, because that's one thing we looked at, at, trying to lower the whole thing down into the basement to create the mm. design. So that's a, that's a major factor you need to be aware of. They do not have control or use of the basement. Why? Uh, the building is owned by uh, three nonprofits, and our lease right. does not include all of the basement under the stage. Okay. Nothing more in your presentation. We'll open public comment. And I have one request to speak, and that would be Mr. DeForest. Mr. Cunningham, if you wouldn't mind giving up your seat for Mr. DeForest. Mr. DeForest, if you could keep your comments just that, comments. Yes. And you Thank have you. Uh, three minutes total. Yes. If you so need those three minutes. Tell them to Forrest, in my opinion, the conversion of this historic building, uh, which formerly was the church and hasn't changed uh, much since ni oh, 1920, uh, cert at least fr from the exterior, uh, as presented, certainly. Uh, uh, compromises the uh, historic this this historic building I mean I guess the choice is maybe they should go and build a, build a new building that might fit the the I realize that the basement is storage for I presume it's for unity uh, I would think uh, or for other things, I would think with the with the existence of the basement, the uh, if that if the basement could be acquired, and there's no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, the, that then the seating the 
building could be lowered somewhat so this huge 55 foot tall fly <coughs> that really impacts the neighborhood in my opinion could be uh, lowered thank you thank you mr. DeForest seeing no other public I will close public comment and bring it to questions from the Commission Commissioner Rias question um, what is underneath the seating capacity who is that also considered part of the basement underneath the um, audience part of the uh, we're so right now there's a balcony in the building and a flat floor uh, you show you at? show an angle of, of seating yes so we are yeah. building Let's, our uh, new step seating over this was the one I was looking for so you're having all new step seating there. we're building a new step seating that mats, matches up to the existing balcony um, which is okay. going to be left and existing what about the space underneath so we're using the space underneath for the restrooms the restrooms are currently on the stage under the balcony and that's that's one of the ways that we're clearing out the stage for additional wing space is to move the restrooms from the stage underneath the balcony which is underneath you need the seats. all that space for restrooms that's Thank in you. a lot of space for restrooms um, what I have you approached about getting capacity of the basement obviously we've been working on other, that for the three other, years the other store or the other uh, owners do not uh, have ready access to that site that basement do they how do they access except coming through the parking lot uh, let, let, let me let me answer the question so first of all we have actually been trying for maybe three years to see if we could acquire the basement um, so that has not been possible uh, unity shop uh, controls a good portion of the basement and they do have direct connection to the basement in all the rest of the building the office side of the building and it is very important to unity's operations that they have that whole area so this is something we have explored very very thoroughly it, it is I, am, am I answering that question it, yeah. it is connected unity occupies unity shop occupies the entire basement portion some 4,000 feet maybe mm -hmm. under the office portion of the building okay. and it connects to this portion of the basement under the stage um, it does and that in fact the portion under the stage is their loading area they have a ramp that comes down with a conveyor belt uh, and it is integral to the receipt of all of their food operations it's also true as a separate problem because we have tried to consider every alternative if we were to lower the stage into the basement then we wouldn't have dressing rooms so, so there is that separate problem the current plan the stage is relatively non-functioning because all of stage left which is viewed looking out towards the audience mm -hmm. so all of the west side is occupied by restrooms which means that patrons have to walk up a ramp inside of everybody to get to the to the restrooms during a performance which is not satisfactory so the idea is to move the restrooms off stage left and put them under the existing balcony the existing balcony and the the slope of the seating that you're referring to connects from where the existing front row is to where the existing balcony is and just makes it level and that gives every patron a so correct would you sighting. point out precisely on the plans where the restrooms will be it, it's, it's the, right here. under the balcony under the existing balcony I'm looking so. at there okay. right, 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 right here that's there. right that's yeah. where you're putting them all right that's what I wondered okay. because it wasn't identified in our little map okay okay any other questions Commissioner Rios Commissioner not Bush at this time Boucher Commissioner Sharp. No questions. Commissioner Murray. Any questions? Commissioner Lavoie. Um, just a minor one. Um, the width of the sidewalk between the planter and the curb. That goes down to <coughs> four feet. Um, so you're referring to this distance here yes. where we've got the planter that encroaches further than our landing. That distance is four feet. Okay, for, uh, then uh, second question from the railing back is, is what's what's dimension or back to the building or yeah, back no back to the end of the planter the depth of the planter from oh, the from front the, of rail from here to there yeah exactly it's two feet yeah, and what we're actually feet, doing um, is to get the size planter that we need to, for this size tree we're actually cantilevering the landing over the planter so this little dashed line here represents the back of the mm -hmm. planter so that the the root ball has room to grow 
Okay. Then I'm more concerned about constricting the sidewalk. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, LaVoy? No. Commissioner Jury, any questions? I do. I have two. Uh, will there be rock and roll at, at this venue? <laughs> <laughs> And where's that in the guidelines? So I should probably answer that. We, we, <laughs> we want to make the theater available as many nights as possible to performing arts groups. We've never asked ourselves that question. Maybe Jonathan wants to weigh in. We are insulating the building because, it, we're, to be honest, we're doing it for our purposes so that sound will not intrude from the outside. So that to the extent we have musical performances of any kind on the inside, we think that the sound should be pretty well contained because we're trying to change that from the current status quo. Right now, if there's a performance, you can hear Soho, and mm -hmm. we're trying to address all those problems. A lot of the sound comes through the stained glass windows, uh, so we want to box those out and insulate them while preserving the look from the outside and maybe even lighting them so they look better. Right now, they're not lit, so you can't enjoy them. So we really have tried to do this in a sensitive way uh, to the most important historical aspects and to be good neighbors. And, and we think the landing will be will be a positive benefit for that block of Victoria, which is a little uninteresting. Commissioner Drury, any My other second question, question? Um, is, have you uh, considered the view shed from the Anapamu end of the parking lot? Uh, I'm just, I'm thinking if you're, you're going to lose a good bit of whatever view there is of the Arlington, which will be compromised also by the, by the new project at, across the street with and when it gets built. Um, but that, that 50 foot, that, Phone. Oh, my, it's not good. <laughs> not my phone. Um, so I'm just wondering if if that that is it's rather monolithic, and I mean, no matter how it's how it's architected, it's a, a fairly substantial chunk. So there will be uh, there will be loss of view of uh, the Arlington, and I was wondering if you, if um, when you come back, if you could give us an idea of what that loss would look like. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any so you mean from the parking lot over the building to the Arlington? I think he's thinking, yeah, and I think he's also thinking more of like from the corner of um, Chapala and Anapamu, looking back. And Anapamu? We have that to be the You mean Victoria? No. No, I don't think Anapamu. Yeah, oh. right there. From there. Uh-huh. You're looking back towards the Arlington, Mr. Weston, from this corner. Uh, and you can see the Arlington, so we want to see what is okay, the you. fly, uh, what, how the fly affects that. that. Yeah. Good point. Any other questions? Yes. No. Commissioner Drury? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Thank Commissioner Schellenberger, your turn. Um, just a question. You talked about what was driving the height of the building um, and these seams. They look to be about 20 feet tall, something of that nature. Is that the only consideration for the height? Is, or are there other factors that are driving the overall height here? It, it's really curtains, that type of thing. It's everything. It's everything. It's all. It's the proscenium height that drives the height of the Sorry. height of the stage fly lock. So we're just showing that fly as an example, but it's really the proscenium height that drives what the height of the fly lock should be. But only because of the scenery. It's the scenery is the main thing. Curtains. Right. If we had a, you know, if we have the, the the main curtain at the front, that's also going to be flown. So that needs to have um, at least double the proscenium opening uh, to go up as well. It's flown in full height. It doesn't roll or um, like Roman Roman shade or. It has to go up in its entire extended length? It doesn't have to. It can go sideways, but it's if you have a proscenium that's 18 feet, you need to be able to accommodate a scenery or something in the background that's the same height, or if not more. It's on. Don't touch it. So, okay. so some, you. I see that uh, an artistic director is coming forward, and you can, Jonathan. Some of the sets are constructed out of wood and lumber and timber, so they're not easily made. Yeah, they're three-dimensional, yeah. so it's not easy to, to fold them. If you could state your name for the record and speak into the microphone and answer only Commissioner Schallenberger's question, please. Jonathan Fox. Uh, so uh, it's true that sometimes scenery can go off to the sides of the theater, but a lot of the theatricality comes from scenery moving up and down. So. Um, it gives a lot of a lot more flexibility to be able to have this kind of opening and to have scenery go completely out of sight, not just for ensemble but for other 
types of uses if ballet wants to use it and they, they have pieces that want to fly up. <coughs> did, that an, did that answer your question? Thank you. you can put the microphone back. Um, any other questions from the commissioners? Nope. Okay, we'll move on to comments. Commissioner Arias. Yeah. I'm on. Great. I think when you have a historic building, particularly a historic commercial building, it's very hard to maintain its viability, its economic viability, and I can understand the problems that you have. Um, I personally like um, the B rendition better, and what I would think I would ask you to consider is essentially making your expansion of your tower look uh, as an independent building away from the others. Don't try to blend, don't try to mix it in or anything like that. Make it stand on its own and perhaps um, um, have some of the characteristics of the tower on the far side into that tower to make a balance. But essentially recognizing that you you aren't going to be able to blend it into the existing building and not try to, but give it a little bit of harmony with the existing tower, but have it somewhat stand on its own. Hmm. And I understand, again, the economics and the problems of maintaining a building, and I would not like to see this building um, not be viable in the community. I think it's, I like the buildings, I like both of them, and I, I uh, I've always liked to do architecture, but um, this might be a chance to just sort of say, okay, this is different. Mm -hmm. This is in a little bit independent, and I can't, we can't blend it in. As the, the roof line that you have now proposed, I don't like it at all. I'm sorry. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner Rios. Commissioner Boucher, anything to add to that? No, not at the moment. Okay, Commissioner Sharp. Thank you. Well, I certainly understand or I think I understand the problem, and it's it's a big one. Mm -hmm. And I also am very in favor of saving the building. Its uh, its history is certainly voluminous over many many years. So I um, do not in any way like Scheme A. I think it's uh, a very poor solution. Uh, scheme B, that was my first thought, was to try and take parts of the entrance tower and, and work it into the fly. Um, it's still, it's certainly better. It needs more work, but that's why we're here, to talk about stuff like that. May so, I stop you for one second? Yes. Just um, to clarify, Scheme B is shown on A301. Correct. The rectilinear okay. I just, edition. Go ahead. I just wanted to make sure that we. So it. Uh, I think I could support a fly back there. I'm not. I don't un totally understand the mechanism and the requirements and the catwalk and, and rigging and all of that as to what, how that five feet can be uh, reduced down. Uh, but. Uh, I certainly can support a fly on this building and the rest of the uh, uh, changes to the structure. Can you um, speak to the um, landing along Victoria, please? If you could switch to that. If well, you have anything I, to say about it. The it, railing know. design isn't what I would have chosen. However, I haven't also given it a great deal of thought without looking around and and walking the area, I, I was concentrating on the fly. Unit. I understand. Um, council will be looking for um, comments on the landing. <coughs> so um, if any of you um, commissioners that have already made comments want to add anything, um, we'll wait till the end and you can add those, please. Um, Commissioner Murray, uh, comments on either the fly or the landing, uh, you, or both or all? Um, I could support the uh, the landing. I that was in the report and it was very persuasive and 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 
that the, the concrete steps are not, uh, you know, significant than they could be. And I also think that uh, the, the theater, the entrance of the theater should should be pronounced with the side, sidewalk and all that. I, too, um, not quite sure at this point that whether the railing are completely appropriate, but I don't think that's a, a big issue. Um, um, The uh, flight tower, um, certainly the scheme uh, B uh, is, you know, I can see the, the sort of the inspiration from the building. This is what I thought, uh, I show you what I'm, I'm sort of looking for. And uh, if you show the pictures mm -hmm. um, of the front, I could, um, Okay. That's probably yeah. one of the best shots uh, there. One of the best shots. I was actually. You want to uh, use that? Yeah. Point? This this portion here, the, to me, really connects the building well. You know, the two styles of the building with hmm. the tower. And I was thinking I that so to be successful that. for your, um, if I were in your shoes, I would try to find a way to do the tower that if you were to look at this building you said oh yeah we know that's new but it's not it's a section that is not competing with the main tower your tower right now to me competes in its scale and massing competes with this main tower however i think this sense of of uh you know it's a basically a boxy a connecting piece because you know what's important to me is that uh, north of uh, in that east elevation, which is hidden by that one-story building, is actually really, really important. You know, that's the glass windows. And in someday that other building were to change or move, you will really have that. And uh, so somehow that your proposal needs to work with that side of the building where uh, from from an upper move, you could look up and say, oh yeah, I understand this building. Uh, this is what they're doing. Um, I think if you do that, it will certainly minimize the, the view sheds of the Arlington and also not competing in its sense of, of scale. So that's what I'm looking for. I have no figures to tell you. I am not, at this point, you've, you've heard me say that the 55 feet high is is bothersome to me but i think it's more the i think there is a way you can bring the height down and work with the width because you've got a blank wall back here i mean you've got anyway i'm that's all i'm going to say commissioner lavoy comments um, thank you mr chair um i i think you were right in looking at the libero as an example of how to solve this problem rather than the Arlington, which I think was unfortunate from day one. Um, the, the Libero is an exemplary building, um, and what makes that fly work is its scale. Um, and, and you picked up on that, and um, thank you for bringing in Scheme B, because I think Scheme B is much more successful as a design and as an addition to this building. Um, and, and I would go further in simplifying it to take off the windows and maybe just use a blank, uh, what's called the blind window, just a recess in the wall mm -hmm. that, that gives the wall some articulation, just very simple. Uh, it might have the Gothic arch-shaped top. Um, I very much like the incorporation of the door with the side buttresses. Um, you know, you, you might buttress the corners. Um, to make this seem like a different part of the building, um, even though I, I like the fact that it marries to this building better, but um, for the sake of the Secretary of the Interior, perhaps if it had either a slightly different stucco texture and or color, mm -hmm. a more recessive color, mm -hmm. it might, it would make that break from existing and historic to new addition. Um, I don't have a problem with, with the height of the building. You've explained why it needs to be there. 
Um, it's, it, it's fine with me. I think it's okay. Um, Enough said. Oh, no, uh, the, the, uh, the land, street. The landing ramp. Could the you landing ramp. Um, I, I would recommend City Council to um, uh, to grant the easement um, in that it is an improvement for the public benefit. Thank you, Commissioner Lavoie. Commissioner Drury, any comments? Yes, Mr. Chair, I would agree with uh, Commissioner Lavoie. And I, I also would like to make a comment that I, I would very much like to see this building. Um, be successful as uh, part of the part of the uh, downtown, and and brought up to snuff or, or structurally. Um, so I, I support uh, I support this project, and the uh, and I would say that the the sidewalk. I, when I, speaking of rock and roll, I was really thinking about what those railings will do under the the weight of uh, um, people, glandular. Uh, how do I put this? Uh, rock and roll. Rock and roll. There, that's, that's what I'm thinking. So, but that will come. I suspect that would come back before us and with um, with the specifications and so on. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Drury. Commissioner Schoenberger. I I can change that real easy. You're so lively. Um, just generally wanted to uh, express support for the project as a whole, the concept. Um, I think there was initially some, uh, or you might have sensed a reaction to the massing, but um, I, I just feel it's, it's uh, generally acceptable and it's, in com it's compatible with the neighborhood. We're in the performing arts area of downtown. Um, I, the, the size to me, uh, it, it, isn't, it isn't an issue. It, it, it is a significant increase, but but for the functionality, neighborhood compatibility, I don't have a problem with it. I was having a little bit of an issue with the fact that these temporary light prop types of things are driving massing. It seems like the prop community is putting the burden on the building community instead of the other way around. And it just seemed to me that props are driving massing and there could be some Maybe they fold instead of being an entirely, you know, unified structure that could. But then you're talking about reinventing a whole industry, so <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there. Um, I would have liked to have seen option B a little bit further to be able to comment more. I mean, it, it just came today. The the Rorschach on it is it's definite improvement over the first option and um, and seems to be the the, the solution conceptually. Um, we can get into the details later. But um, the landing is, is an improvement, I, I would say. I would recommend also to council that, that they accept the uh, um, encroachment. Um, and that's it. Thank you, Commissioner Schoenberger. Mr. Chair, I yes. have one more quick comment. I'm going back to you guys. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, I would personally not be in favor of incorporating the louvers in your tower that they're for a purpose in the tower, but they wouldn't be by any stretch of the imagination in the fly structure. Okay. Commissioner um, Boucher, did you have anything to add about the Victoria Street landing? Commissioner um, Arias? Anything all been said, and I agree with what was said. Okay, thank you. Um, now it's my turn. Um, uh oh. Yeah, uh oh. <laughs> Um, I, I don't have a problem with the fly. Um, uh, you know, we do need to massage it a bit, and, and, and I think Commissioner Urias brought up a good um, point about um, trying to separate that massing from the rest of the building. Um, some of the other things commissioners mentioned were removal of the louvers, um, the, the removal of real windows. Maybe it's a gesture of real windows. The thing I am having a problem with and I don't, I don't like it um, that I'm having a problem with it, but is the Victoria Street landing. Um, to me, it is contrived, forced. Um, it does significantly change the proportion, I think, of the building. Um, if you look at the elevation, I know that people don't see elevations as they're drawn, but it does change the proportions because it cuts off the base of the the build you know the building with that railing. Um, 
I'm obviously um, the minority, um, but I have to send my voice along with the others, and I cannot support the, the entry landing. So I will sum up the comments made, and if we have someone that is willing to make a motion, um, please state what time frame you want that motion, what you want that motion to do, and then we'll move forward. Um, so the comments would be, consider massing the fly tower to read as a separate mass slash building. Ready for the next? Okay. Provide a photo simulation from the southwest corner of Anapamu and Chapala streets. Scheme B, as shown on A-301, is majorly supportable with some modifications such as removing the louvers, such as removal of real windows. You have major support for the landing with some modifications. The proposal needs to continue to address the 55 foot height massing of the fly tower and the Commission as a whole is very much in support of the concept of this proposal. Commissioner Schallenberger would you like to make a motion or add to comments? There's a comment. Go ahead. Uh, with regard to the louver um, you must, you would use the word removing the louvers. I did. And I, maybe revising the okay. louvers. That's fine instead. with me. I, I don't, they may be appropriate in some form or another. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else to those comments? Looking to person to make a motion, please. So to, excuse me. So yes. revise the louvers, but do remove the windows. Let's say revise the windows okay. as well. Thank I you. think that's a better, it's better. Oh, leave it open. Yeah, it leaves it open. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Still it is, but yeah, let's get those comments in. So move. What's your motion? To refer to City Council in support of the encroachment um, of, a of the design that's presented okay. with the understanding that further refinements uh, will be practiced by the Commission. Do we have a second to that motion? <laughs> um, I believe it was Lavoie and um, Drury. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. It, would you just read that again? I just want to know a little bit more. Sorry. Well, do you want the, the summary of the comments or do you want the motion? For both. Yeah, well, the motion. A, so let me, maybe I should ask this question. So the comments are just comments separate from the motion? Is that? Well, I believe uh, Gabriella stepped out for a moment, but I, I believe she will summarize the comments because the city council is going to want to read those comments. Exactly. Okay. And it's not just going to be, you know, it's it's in your lap now because HLC supports it. Okay, so, so it's coming. Because it'll have the summary, the summary as commissioner or chair of suiting. Okay, great. Because um, um, the only one comment that was there that I pres I don't uh, uh, share is. Uh, as uh, design is a separate building, okay. and I, I just don't. Okay. Uh, so maybe the comment to, should read the majority of the commission. Well, yes, I agree because I don't agree with that. I don't. Uh, I don't that's either. very. Yeah. Oh, maybe Do you want to we take a take well, then Yes, please. Okay. Well, maybe Strava. Maybe you say okay. Comments all right. Let's all let's. Depends what separate building means. We're all looking true. at different. That's true. We're all looking thoughts, at different so. thoughts. So. Do you want to just strike that comment then? Well, do you want to take a straw vote and then? Oh, why don't the no? comments? Excuse me. Why don't the comments just stand and let them go back and redesign and think about things and come back? And, and my comment was consider massing the fly tower. Yeah. It, what, or, or I shouldn't say my comment. The comment read consider yeah. massing the time. So, it, yeah, it's not. It's not you must. Yeah. No, it isn't. But the. Helpful. If that's okay with the applicant, we just want clear direction. Well, I'm going to I'm going to so ask the applicant. Back yeah, I'm going to ask the applicant if they asked. understand the comments in the motion. Do you understand the comments in the motion? Yes. Uh, am, am I correct? Sure. It's very difficult to separate yeah. this yes. from the building. <laughs> from the you building. know, so 
what I had suggested was a visual separation of old and new, and that's what's required of you. Okay, so consider massing the fly tower to read as, I mean, that's what I, that's what I said. So well, to, okay, to, pardon me? In, in, in the comments you read, it was a separation. No, I the made the comment. Building. It was my comment to consider it as a separate building, which could be done by color, architecture, or any other te in, technique. In separate building is not the right way. Okay, then. To it's Okay, well, you would Okay, say would you like, Mr. Lavoie or Ms. Murray, <laughs> would you like to propose a comment that um, might be acceptable? Actually using Secretary of the Interior standards, differentiating differentiate compatible between the old and new. Very well. Okay, everybody's talking at once. Okay. So let's have one Differ person. Okay, Secretary of the Interior standards, differentiation of the old and the new. Good. Okay. And um, we've voted on it. Um, I guess I need to open it up again. All in favor of, wait, Ms. Scantz. Okay, so that comment, I'm, not, I'm striking consider massing the fly tower Correct. to read as a separate mass slash building. You want that out? That is struck, yes. Okay, and then all I had was a comment that said, Secretary of Interior Standards differentiate old from new. We, 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 we study the fly tower to be in accordance with the Secretary of Interior Standards. Thank you. Will he be with, re meeting? with respect to visual separation. Yeah. Okay, is that, that good? Yeah. What kind of continuance do you want, Mr. Chair? We're not there yet. Yeah. Um, Ms. Gantz, do... Deep reading, I would like to hear everything clearly. Okay. Uh, once and for all. Okay, so the motion by Lavoie, seconded by Drury, to refer to City Council, HLC, uh, support of, sorry, I'm, I've, I'm scribbling here. Um, of the, of the um, encroachment and the design is pre presented with further refinements. And the comments were then, restudy the fly tower to be in accordance with Secretary of Interest Standards, differentiating old from new. The second comment provide photo, uh, photo simulations from the southwest corner of Anacapa and Chapala nope. Streets. No, Anapamu and Chapala. Anapamu, it's, yeah, it's Yeah, you probably just wrote Anna or something, but go this ahead. This is like scribbled. Uh, she, on sheet A, 3.01, scheme B is majorly supportable. <laughs> That's what um, she said. Okay, is, is, <laughs> is supportable. It's just ball. supportable. <laughs> With some modifications, uh, revised louvers and revised real windows. Uh-huh. Comment four, major support expressed for the landing with some modifications. Uh -huh. Number five, um, the proposal needs to address the 55-foot massing of the fly tower. Uh -huh. And number six was the HLC is very much in support of this proposal. Well, the concept of this proposal, yeah. Because I don't want to say it's the proposal because right. that, yeah. that okay. locks us into what's proposed. It's the concept of the proposal. Okay, everybody comfortable with those comments? Yeah, I think it's been very helpful. Yeah, it's very helpful. All right. What went south there? Um, so I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So, uh, uh, Chairman Sudi, am I correct that your opposition is solely with respect to the landing in the front? Not correct. Okay, thank you. And uh, I would like to say that I appreciate the time you devoted to it, and we appreciate uh, those of us that are working to make this happen as volunteers. Really appreciate your uh, expressions of support to try to do something good for Santa Barbara. Thank Likewise. you. Likewise. Can we get a continuance, two weeks continuance? No, because you have to go to council. Oh, okay. we have you're, to. Yeah, okay. you're going to council, so Before it's indefinite. So it's, really, so it's really an indefinite yeah, continuance. Indefinite. I can, I can tell you that we would like yeah. to come back as soon as it's humanly possible. Well, you, you need to put yourself then on the calendar. Thank you very once much. Once you finish with we'll council. Walk. Oh, boy. Next item on the agenda is item six. Yep. And I am going to um, call for a four minute recess. Yes.
next item on the agenda is item six, 500 Ninos Drive. This is final approval of the project is being requested. The project must comply with Planning Commission Resolution number 054-06. The project was last viewed on December 10th, 2008, and I know that uh, three of the commissioners that are currently on this commission were not in, on the commission December 10th, 2008, and that would be Suiting, um, Lavoie, and uh, Bush, is it, uh, Arias. Um, have we brought ourselves up to speed on this project, Lavoie? Uh, yes. Okay. Ms. Arias, have you brought yourself up to speed? I myself watched the tape, read the minutes. Watched the tape, read the minutes, but I was part of the previous review of the building. As was I. Okay. okay. Introduce yourselves for the record, please. <laughs> Wherever you want. Here's your pen. My name is Rich Block. I'm the CEO of the Santa Barbara Zoo. Welcome. My name is Patrick Berg. I'm with Newman Mandro Andrelitis Architects. Welcome. My name is Andy Newman, one of the architects. Welcome. Derek Eichelberger with Arcadia Studio. What are you doing here? No, just kidding. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Give us your presentation, please. Well, just uh, kind of in, in, in quick summary, uh, uh, we've recycled this back long enough that we have commissioners that were on the commission, that have left the commission, came back to the commission, and we're back. Uh, with this, uh, the, the, the kind of the really brief history was uh, we started this in 1999. We'd engaged uh, Andy Newman and his team uh, to put together the concept. And over a period of, of two years, in 2001, 2002, we worked with historic landmarks on some modifications to the appearance of the building. And, and we're excited to do that. But also in 2002, the uh, planning uh, staff asked the zoo to go back and do a master plan that encompassed all of the proposed uh, projects for the for the campus. Uh, that took about four years. So in December of 2006, Planning Commission uh, approved a series of five projects, of which this was uh, one of those projects. We uh, got this back on track in 2007, and 2008 we. Uh, diverted resources to complete California trails, which uh, you all had the opportunity to review and which has been very successful. And so in, in, in 2009, we brought this back full speed to begin working on this again. Uh, we, we brought this back actually for uh, some aspects of that in 2008 that we've been able to look at. And uh, here we are today. This is an important part of the zoo. Uh, it, it, matches a, a number of significant needs, primarily in the area of education. This, this gives us uh, some, some significant educational space. Uh, the, the project itself uh, combines uh, about 7,000 square feet of new construction uh, with the renovation of, of approximately another roughly 2,000 square feet. And uh, it's an exciting project. It's been around a long time. And we're, we're ready to make this happen and give the, uh, the zoo an education facility that it is sorely needed for the past 30 years. Okay, let's see the architecture. So when, and the when we started architecture. this project, it was the last millennium and I didn't have gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think er early on, as, as some of you will recall, we had a, a much more contemporary mm -hmm. building. The idea was to uh, make the arch architecture disappear and immerse into the habitat of the zoo. Um, after a, a, a process, uh, it was determined that it should uh, relate to the Pueblo Viejo. Uh, somebody here made a couple of suggestions which we, we uh, embraced. One, one was to look at the roundhouse of the, of the train station and the other was, was the uh, casino and Catalina, sort of an idea. So again, our, our desire was to open the building up to the to the zoo, uh, and uh, this is the main facade of the building. Uh, and you are here for final. We're here for final. Quickly 
go to the. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Rios. Um, as a point of information, let me turn my thing on. Yeah. Um, since my family is a member of the zoo, um, I checked with um, planning staff, and they checked with Mr. Ramon that uh, it is not a conflict of interest, and I want to make that very clear. Okay, thank that you. I can't act in this matter. So just for orientation, um, this is the existing pink building on this plaza, uh, and we chose through adaptive reuse to reuse this building and to energize this uh, this entry, which I think will help energize the, the plaza. So by reusing this and having this an entry uh, into the new building, uh, I think helps strengthen what's already there. Uh, the other entry is here. This is the facade you saw, which opens onto the garden. Uh, Derek will present the landscape plan, but we had special funding for this garden, which, which uh, again, Derek will address. Um, so that's kind of the, the site plan. We're doing a little bit of renovation. Uh, it, it was interesting as we got into it, their food prep was in three separate buildings. So what we've done is combined that into the building and uh, taken one of the food storage areas and converting that into uh, the uh, sort of lounge area for the employees. And the food prep, uh, we also saw that as an opportunity for education, since this is an education center. And so there's a, there's a, a rather large window going right into the food prep. Um, I'm sort of going quickly because some of no, you... No, this is, this is, we want you to go quickly because uh, you're here for final. Um, so the loading dock area uh, brings the food in here. Here's the offices. Um, the keepers now have a facility. We, we reuse the existing that facilities, but created another entrance to that. Uh, this is the lounge area I was talking about. We added some bathroom facilities there. Um, since this sheet came up, I'll, I'll just sort of go out of sequence a little bit. At our last meeting, um, uh, there were sort of three issues, and uh, one was the bus stop. and. We had a, another design, but when we met with the MTD, they said we had to use one of their standard designs, and that this was a design that you had previously, they'd worked with you and had previously approved. So one of the things that's different here, we've worked with uh, Public Works to push the sidewalk out into the street right away a little bit more uh, so that the bench area uh, does not encroach any further closer to the creek than the existing sidewalk which was a potential issue. And so this is the proposed uh, bus stop. Uh, Let's get to the elevations, probably. Some of the cheap ones. Okay. We are talking to sheet A4.01. So um, this is the color board we're proposing. Uh, the stucco would be uh, this white color. Uh, Sorry. These prefabricated columns would be this uh, concrete color. This is the floor material would be natural concrete with a stain in it. At color admixture. Our trellises would be uh, dark brown. There's some canvas awnings that would be this material. The, the lounge area is, is going to have a tile roof to match the existing. Uh, our hardware is going to be uh, a bronze. This is the wrought iron for the, the brackets for the awnings. Um, this is the color of the doors and windows. Okay. That's about it. Um, and I'm sorry, by, by hardware you're meaning door hardware, correct? Exactly. exactly. Any other 
hardware other than door hardware? Or light fixtures? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. I think that's all right. Okay, proceed. Um, is there, is there, should we go into the landscape? If you're done. With uh, so building sure. elevations, yeah. I, I, I mean, it seems you are. Yeah, it's I mean, I pretty think simple. Think We're all familiar with it. Exactly. So, uh, I, th I think the the two other things that were brought up at the last meeting, you know, there was the bus stop, it was the landscape yep. plan, and then it was the uh, educational exhibit. Okay, let's go to landscape, Mr. Eichelberger. Andy, if you could switch places, it would make it a lot easier. Thank you. I'm, I'm memorizing. Absolutely. Hello. Welcome. The main site plan has not changed from the last time we started. Uh, the main ideas are to create a network of paths and walkways that are accessible. The existing pathways are whoever walk them are non-functional yeah. practically. <laughs> so this will be a, a, a nice new way to get into the, the main heart of the park. As such, we're, we've added a fun little uh, paving piece. It's a uh, rosette, uh, compass rose with a um, interactive sundial. And we've got some details for that inside. The big idea for the landscape itself uh, is to create an outdoor amphitheater, so it would be a, a lawn amphitheater primarily uh, facing the new uh, educational center, so it gives kids a great opportunity to be outside in nature, in the zoo, um, with uh, all of the great things that are at the zoo and be learning. So that part of it's fairly simple. Uh, there's an existing drainage system which we are turning into a uh, creek, a riparian creek. The co main comment that came out of the last meeting was that this experience should be more riparian in nature. We did have the, the creek, and it did have a few riparian plants, but it was much more exotic at that time. The new planting plan uh, has really made an effort to be almost completely riparian in character. Which is the planting plan, alder, um, platinus racemosas, Bellularia, California, Circus Occidentalis is the main tree canopy. Um, we are utilizing some of the existing palms um, that are in, as part of the existing landscape to buffer uh, the palm trees that are in the front here. But this entire gesture is completely right there in nature now. This is a little bit more exotic, and what we wanted to do uh, is as you come in, this will be open and you'll see into the exhibits up here, but we wanted to create some privacy in this part of the garden and create some buffering as, so, as people walked along here. This was somewhat screened from both sides to create a little bit of privacy for in here. So we get into some Arbutus marinas, some Prunus lion eyes, and other things that will create a little bit more layering. Um, let's see, if you're interested, uh, the zoo is utilizing a design build uh, contractor to do the water feature so we're just providing sort of the bare minimum in terms of uh, elevations and sections so they can do that. Uh, we are incorporating two bridge elements which are going to be um, prototypes that are used at the new elephant exhibit. We'll see if you know the zoo we're using those details which are very handsome. And we've got a full working drawing set with irrigation, finding plans, details, all that kind of stuff. Um, if the rest of the commission would just humor me real quick, I want to look through this. No. several exotics um, that the zoo will make decisions about as we go through the pricing process. Okay. Let's conclude your presentation. Uh, I think the final 
uh, thing I want to address um, is the educational exhibit. Maybe this would be a is it sufficient here as a site plan? Mm -hmm. No? Let's go back to our site plan. If you could just hold on to this. There. At, at the, the last meeting, um, if we had a board, that, that there's a series of wonderful historical photographs, and so I think that was a condition of the planning commission, I believe, that, that we have. A, historical demonstration and one of the comments was made that, that the board was I think too large and too many images and people wouldn't bother to read it and would be more successful if we broke it up into three mm -hmm. boards and uh, in thinking about it further uh, uh, I think the zoo staff came up with a really good idea and that was to to relocate the, the educational exhibit uh, along here uh, sort of on the back side and along the train track where you have a captive audience yeah. and you can stop, stop the train. The tra and, uh, because if we put it here, people will walk right by us. And uh, so I thought that was a really good insight and also helps create a point of interest and enhance uh, this back side of the zoo. Um, so we haven't developed the idea any further except taking your idea of breaking it up into three boards and then having the, the sort of historical images. And, um, that's a sort of an ongoing project. Uh, we don't have any further details, but that's that's what we uh, think is a good way to go. Mr. Carey, anything? No. Okay. Questions. We'll start with Commissioner Drury. Uh, wait. Would, yes. Did you read the minutes from last time? No, I don't have them. Oh, okay. Um, I in mean, fact, it, it would be helpful if I could read the minutes from the last meeting. I don't. I don't have them in front of me. I left them at home. You did. I. I'm sorry. I must have lost them. Is this a genuine copy, <laughs> sanctioned by the city? <laughs> yeah. Looks like it's been altered to me. Uh, yeah, pretty close. <laughs> Okay, I will read the minutes. Um, the motion, um, and this was on December 10th, 2008, which is the last time it was seen. Preliminary approval of the landscape design and continued indefinitely with the following comments. Bus stop. Positive comments from all commissioners. Interpretive design. Provide further development study regarding the content, structure, size, universal design application, and readability. Secondly, on interpretive design, it was suggested that the board be broken up into three separate boards with small spacing between them. Number three, landscaping. A, it was suggested that riparian plant materials be used as the gateway. B, the giant bird of paradise, Strelitirgina, should be moved to soften a building or for screening. And C, study the use of California meadow, it says sage, but I think it's sedge and Monterey Cypress, Capressus macrocarpa. That help? Okay, Commissioner Drury, any questions? I do not. Commissioner Lavoie, any questions? Yes, yes. Chair. That elevation change. <coughs> the elevation. Actually, um, I can use the cover. Thanks. On, on, on your cover, the, um, on the exterior elevation, is it, did you have glass above the doors? You left the house, John. Yes. So it's, it's undivided light glass. Yes. And on that set, we there was a glitch when it printed. If you go to the elevation sheets, the glass didn't show up, but it, Where did you it, find it that information? got that repaired. Just, just going around on the okay. So that was then, unfortunately an no, no, error when it got just printed. Right now. Then, then the question would be, why did you choose to use divided lights in one location and not in another? I think at one time we had been asked to rework the proportions of the uh, of these arches. Uh, we had them a lot taller before, and we were asked to kind of bring the spring point down. I think we we just felt that that uh, division of glass um, worked in proportionally with the rest of uh, what we're proposing on this particular elevation. We do have some clear story windows that are on the opposite side of this space 
the classroom space that reflect the same uh, detailing. And then the administrative. They're, they're, they're showing up the divided line. So the divided light on one side and not on the other. No, no, they are on both sides. This, this didn't print properly. So we didn't we didn't notice when the drawing sent it somehow I'm accidentally sorry. accidentally that the, answers my question. Those yeah. windows got turned off. That's yeah, fine. but those should be divided lights above. Okay. I okay. apologize for that, but that was an oversight on my okay. part. And just to mix things up, how about Commissioner Boucher? Any questions? I don't know where you got this idea. Where <laughs> No, I don't no. have any questions. Commissioner Murray, Commissioner Sharp. No question. Commissioner Arias. Yes, um, I didn't hear anything about the Monterey cypress trees. Did you incorporate them in your landscaping plan? No, we did not, but we did include oaks and sycamores. Okay. All right. Okay. A um, couple questions I had, actually. Um, is there any solar um, panels proposed on the bus stop? On the bus stop, no. Okay, because we don't, the way that they're installing them lately is like this arm hanging out, and so we don't, we that's don't not part of our approval don't have here. Those on this one, no. Okay, um, what about light fixtures? We do have some extra light fixtures. Um, we need to see a cut sheet, unless um, Drury and Lavoy have looked at those, or Sharp, have you? Seen any of them? Mm -mm. And we, the we, touch, just, we just noticed on the electrical plan the touch sheets didn't, aren't printed on there, so unfortunately we don't have those. But they're handlemen. Uh, we're looking at doing some handlemen fixtures. They occur along this uh, ar arcade on the, uh, the east facade of the building, um, and they're wall mounted sconce fixtures. We do have some more. Um, no, we do have No, they were going to be wrought iron pictures. Yeah, that's what we looked at on those. Um, <coughs> okay, you, I don't think you have enough information for us to properly review it. So, um, next question, um, Mr. Eichelberger, what, what what's the paving material that you're proposing? Concrete. Concrete. And it's color. Is, is that the board you were showing us? Exactly. You said floor. I didn't know if you meant indoor the floor. floor. Went both in, in the indoor, room. outdoor. Okay. The dark. It's the um. This one. Yeah. What is that? Some. That's what something. Okay. And then um, bridge material, Mr. Eichelberger. It's wood plank, I believe. The Can material you? itself is concrete, and we're proposing. We're just matching the same detail that they used at the elephant exhibit. And was that elephant exhibit reviewed by HLC? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't recall it, but anyway, um, that was all the questions I, I had. Question. Um, public, pardon? I have another question. Okay, I forgot to open public comment, so go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. No, go ahead. Okay, you, you stated that you had worked with the MTD and they were not willing to do any changes on their bus uh, stop. Is that correct? The request that came from them was to utilize the... the on what, what basis did they change their policy given the uh, palm trees that are on Upper State Street in the Burkus building and uh, in other locations? There's actually a beach umbrella and a ball on Upper State Street. That's Inside actually on that. Hope, but anyway. Yeah, it's on Hope, but or it's Hitchcock, still in yeah. the Upper State mm -hmm. Street area. Um, have they changed their policy not to allow this or what? Because uh, it seems like a great yeah. chance to do a little tweaking that could be really, really neat. The short answer is um, yes, they have standardized their bus stops. Was that what you were going to say? That's correct, Commissioner okay. Rios, yes. Yeah, that's unfortunate, isn't it? It kind of is, yeah. yeah. Although it's a handsome bus stop. Without solar. Oh, I have to get out my old bus stops from years and years ago. We yeah. had a whole bunch of them. Okay, um, I'm sorry, Levity. Um, <laughs> I'm opening public comment. Seeing nothing, I'm going to close public comment, bring it back to the commission, and we're going to go for comments. And I'm going to start with Commissioner Sharp this time. Well, I have nothing further to add. I think it's a good project. It's certainly been around long enough to stand the scrutiny of time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Commissioner Murray, any uh, uh, thing to add to that? No, I thoroughly concur with Mr. Sharp. Commissioner Boucher, anything? Me too. <laughs> okay. 
Commissioner um, Lavoie, anything? The drawings are, are uh, complete, sufficiently complete, um, and the drawings are consistent with prior approvals. Um, I would recommend um, approval with any final detailing, including the light fixtures to come back to consent. Mm -hmm. Commission. a motion? Well, we haven't heard from all the commissioners, so. With, uh, okay, Commissioner Drew, you're okay with that? Commissioner Arias? Yes. Okay, yeah, and I was also going to add that I think that obviously the light fixtures mm -hmm. and the locations on elevations where they're proposed and the, and the interpretive sign need to come back to, are you comfortable on consent? Yes. Okay, so, so indefinite or two week? Two week to consent. Two week. Two week? Two week. Two week? Yeah. Two Can you make that project design approval and final approval because the previous prelim expired? Thank you. Yes, yes. ma'am. Project so design. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So, so two weeks to consent for um, details? Final details. Final, final, final details. details of lighting fixtures. Signage. signage. Interpretive signage. And lighting fixtures should include cut sheets of fixtures and locations proposed as shown on, or shown on elevations. Okay, so final details of interpretive signage, light fixtures. Um, cut sheets of light fixtures. Okay. And location of light fixtures shown on elevations, to be shown on elevations, whatever you want to say. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Do you understand the motion? Yes. Do you understand the comments? Yes. Congratulations. You're good to go. Mr. Chair. Jacobus. I'd like to share a little bit of what could be potentially good news. Um, I'm thrilled to, that Huguette Clark's will creates a new Bella Guardo, Bella's Guardo Foundation, which will be located in her estate here in Santa Barbara, and focus on fostering and promoting the arts. That is awesome. <laughs> Mention something about the zoo in there somewhere. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> you wouldn't have a zoo if it weren't for the Clarks. No, that would be the child's. That was Mrs. Well, she owned the property, this though, right? No, so Clark? No, Chet was a child. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. But, but we hear that a lot, actually. No, but I thought I thought originally Clark owned that property as well. Uh, the bird refuge. There's one right there. Oh. So hence Andre Clark bird refuge. Right. Yeah, but I thought I didn't realize there was a division line there. That was that yeah, estate. Yeah, I don't think that there was a connection on the estate. Oh, I thought. I there wish was. there were. I mean. Oh. Yeah. We stood up on our hill and watched them burn that house. Yeah. It was the old Delta Ta Delta fraternity there house. You go. There it's grown. We need a recorded place. history on this. Uh, ex Mr. Chair. You, did you hear what Mr. Block said? We need a recorded history on this. <laughs> Kate Carter. We, we, we do. There's yeah. a lot of fraternity guys still she's, around. She's, she's, are. she's been fighting me for years on this. That was in the <laughs> early 50s. <laughs> the bird refuge? Yeah. Okay. Um, moving on, I think that's actually very good news, um, and we do appreciate the Clark estate, or the estate of Huguette Clark, um, and her generous, generous donation. And it remains to see how it pans out, but I, for one, am extremely happy. Yeah, we're not we're not clear yet as to whether the house will actually operate as a museum. Um, it says that. Uh, they got the impression that perhaps that was what they were going to do uh, as part of the foundation. And also 15% of the residual of the estate will go to the foundation. This is huge. This is very big. Very big. Hmm. Okay, sorry. I'm sure it's, it's, more news it's all right. right. It's very <laughs> we're happy to hear it, yeah. too. Okay, this is item 7, and it is 1201 State Street. Mm -hmm. It is Maggie's, previously known as State and A. This is Third concept review. Action may be taken if sufficient information is provided. Project was last reviewed on May 11, 2011. And also, um, Susan has. These aren't complete. These are these are just yeah. sort of the presentation package, and then yeah. the, that's the full package. Yeah. So we just put that down for.
Okay, I will read the minutes from the last meeting, which was May 11th. It was continued four weeks with the following comments. The <laughs> landscape plan is exemplary. Um, study the entry off of State Street, perhaps using wood elements to define that entry. Simplify the light fixtures and ironwork. Prepare an elevation of the bar opening. Not the opening of the bar, but the bar opening. <laughs> and study using terracotta colored ballast as the roof material. Welcome and give your names for the record and proceed with the presentation. Thank you. I'm Chris Halliday of Winnick Architects. Welcome. I'm Barry Winnick of Winnick Architects. Welcome. Barry Shulman of Maggie State Name. Welcome. Great. On a short cord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was still what amazing news about the Clark Estate. Yeah. I'm really excited. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right down the list that you just read, Commissioner. Okay, great. And um, I have to. Thanks. I <laughs> appreciate it. You, you guys can have it too. And um, so basically we, we started with them. The landscape plan we've, we've, we've submitted and it's unchanged except for listing of the um, SWMPs. So that way, one of the things I want to clarify on the agenda is that we actually are interested in going for final approval. Um, so we've um, put enough information in the package so that action can be taken. So I just want to make you aware of that. Okay. So that's the only change on the landscape. Um, and we also put a water compliance statement and it has irrigation details. Um, the next piece is we restudied the entrance along um, State Street at the terrace, which you'll see over here, as well as the main entrance, um, taking into your comments of um, removing the, say, over exuberant um, French detailing that was ironwork and instead changing to a timber structure with canopy. And um, there's a, we've given a few options. The main set has been presented this way, but I have a few little options I want to show you on top. One option would be to have lamps. If you see the current option, that's, we call it option A, it doesn't show it with lamps at the terrace entrance. Um, this would show it with lamps at the terrace entrance. And then there was a second study we did of the timber type. And this would be the second study of the timber type, which shows it with a double post instead of a single post. Um, so we figured we'd offer that for discussion points. Oh, good. We can see them all. Yeah, everybody clear on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, next piece <coughs> is the uh, bar openings. Oh, well, first of all, let's just see the elevations here on Anna Pamu Street. So you can see the bar elevation from the street. And then we have details where we go inside and we show, thank you. I think that's it. Oh, I'm wrong. Thank you. Where we show the bar elevation with the windows open and with the windows closed. And there's a secondary option. And in the secondary option, we show a different mutton pattern on those windows, which would be just with, without muttons, in fact. It's just a simpler uh, window pattern. Quick question: Where do the windows go when it's uh, when it's open? They're bifold, so if I it's perfect. Oh, this is them right there. Yeah, and I can show you in plan. Okay. Right here, they'll perfect. bifold Very and they well. stack off to the sides. Very well. And the next piece, which is the roof share, material. Well, is that one next? Sure. We've got. The can we have the actual, please? Sure. Thanks. By all means. So we still have a picture of the uh, ballast, um, but what we're doing is we're also matching the coping metal going with the terracotta. So we're taking that comment straight. And the next thing that we wanted to look at was um, we had also asked about the lights and the fans. Simplify the exactly. light fixtures. So we area. have, which you'll see in those elevations that they've been simplified. We've gone with a more mission style lantern. And also if you notice on the elevation here, that again, this lantern is more of a mission style. And we have pictures of those. I think after the pictures of the building. So these are the, that would be the wall sconce on the outside of the building. These are similar type of lanterns that would be hanging with inside the terrace area. Okay, so just for the public's and for the commission, this sure. is inside here. This fixture. Precisely. Whoops. Need to slide it over. <laughs> uh, this is this fixture and this is this fixture. Everybody got it? 
Great. Great. And then we also have a simplifying things. Then we also have the fan, which you can see that's the fan right here. It's a Hunter Douglas, very classic style fan. We're, everything we're doing, we're trying to make timeless. Pretty much what, what our helpful selections are made. safer that way. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. And then the, the last piece, um, which, I take which, it back. Which, which will show here, you don't see it in the elevation, but tucked in the side are little step lamps. And this is the example of that. Just subtly, it's a bronze finish, and you know it's two and two and a half by two and three quarters, so it's rather small. And then the last item, one new item, which I can show you in plan, it's not in the agenda, uh, but it is in the submission. Is we conferred with the building department to double check on ADA access as well as uh, egress requirements, and under the new code, our egress requirements are met with these two exits that are here, both to State Street. Um, there used to be an exit here. But it was not ADA compliant because there were three stairs. So what we're doing is we're removing those three stairs, uh, continuing the planter boxes, continuing the stone curb, uh, also doing the wrought iron rails that are adjacent, and just making it infill so that it's an uninterrupted uh, area, just like we did up at the front corner. And one other note is the railings last time were more uh, ornamental as well. Instead, we're going to restore the ones that are there existing, uh, repair and restore them. And that, yeah, back to the... That's just the Anapu Camus elevation that shows that. That all shows right here. So that's an elevation of just having continuous plantings and continuous original railings. Is that it? Oh, is that your face with your presentation? Um, yeah. Okay. I will open public comment. I have one member of the yeah. public wishing to speak. Oh, you're here? Okay. And Mr. DeForest, will you keep your comments to comments? And we've got about three minutes. As I recall at the last, Kellum DeForest, as I recall at the last, uh, on May 11th, the, the uh, applicant was supposed to come in who was asked to come in with uh, entrances that uh, conform to the uh, guidelines. And I don't think they quite do. I don't know these little green awnings that are over the entrances and these lamps don't look very uh, Spanish or even uh, mission style to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. Having no other public, I will close public comment and move to the commission. Commissioner um, Drury, any questions? I do. Um, that those bar windows um, don't exist now at, at uh, no, St. Nice. So that's going to, that would, I assume, start helping with the circulation. I knew you were worried about the, the big sandstone buttresses as being sort of cramping the, the area, but if you open it up like that, would that, assuming that would help circulation? Just just the, the talk and the, you know, people looking out and just, that. yes? <laughs> Is that a question? But I mean, that does seem to be uh, at least a, a uh, I, can't, I can't make a statement. Right, um, right. At, at the interior, I, I, I tend to agree with you. It, it, it's going to make an open environment so yeah. you have less distinction between interior and exterior. It doesn't and, um, change the relation to the street, I don't think. So, so my next question would be, then are you more comfortable with the sandstone pillars as they exist? Uh, yeah, we're keeping them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're, just they're, we're not proposing to change them. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Mahoy, any questions? Uh, yeah. Um, tell me where the non-slip porcelain tile is going. Ah, okay. That, this, is the, this is the example of it. The non-slip porcelain tile is going on the terrace outside as well as the uh, inlay of the little square stones. Um, here's, here's an example, maybe that, or you have it there. So that shows you that it's a combination of the two tiles. Go in the outside terrace, and if we pull up the plan, I can point to the plan. There's a plan right here. So they go in this outside area. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner okay. Murray. Uh, that's the menu. Oh, okay. 
and there's there there's a menu box that we keep. Yeah, the, there'll be a light inside, absolutely. Yeah. They already it's still there. Yeah. Okay, got you. Yes, you mentioned that you checked with the building department regarding the exiting and closing off that, mm -hmm. and you're you're okay there. Yeah, I met with Chris Hansen. In fact, um, of okay, course, I he's retiring in I two months. But uh, <laughs> I did it in writing. Though. Um, well, I mean, trust me, when we file with the building department, that'll be one of the first things they look at. Um, and obviously, if they don't allow it, we of course it's, it's we'll, pretty we close to not being far enough apart from the other one. But uh, we we did the calcs and okay. No, I'm sure you did. Yeah. I just wanted to bring it up. All right. one I appreciate more time. I appreciate your looking it, after it us. It would change everything if, if that wasn't uh, We would have to restore that. Yeah. Fortunately it hasn't been removed, so we would yep. just keep yep. it. Yep. Um anything that is going to be up on the roof that will be visible? Is the skylights, equipment, air conditioning? No. How, does, how is that going to be handled? Well, if you look at the roof of the building currently, there's already a large roof and there's a big area behind where mm -hmm. all the roof equipment is, where the kitchen is behind, all that's going where it was before. Thank you. So there, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. entry, what is your preference? Option B, which would be the it's base drawing here. with the additional lanterns. Oops, nope. Sorry, did I say option B? I'm sorry. B. I meant to say C. Excuse me. Option C. Option C. So it's basically the larger timbers, which I think are in keeping with the large timbers that are up above, and then having the lanterns because, you know, it'd just be nicer to peop for people to see that there's two entrances along sta State Street. And, um, your options. bar openings option, which do you prefer? The one with the buttons. Just because I think it goes into the scale of the size of the windows okay. themselves. Okay. But thank you for asking. Comments? Commissioner Drury? Um, yes. I, I have a, a problem with that where, where the name Maggie's, am I on? The name Maggie's uh, goes, that, yes. That, that roof line coming down like that at that angle, it, I, I don't want to be insulting, but it reminds me of a Denny's. <laughs> and um, it just yeah. doesn't, it doesn't seem to be yeah. You know, it's been I, that I, way for 30 years. I know, I know. <laughs> but you have an opportunity, an opportunity to change it for the better, I think. That would be my comment. Okay. Where would you like it? <laughs> Can you hear? Still in that, <coughs> still in that area where Maggie's is. It, 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 it looks. It may look better in person, but it looks really odd. Mm. So you're talking about about above the menu box. Yes. Yes. That, where Maggie's, where that. Yeah. He's the pointer. Area. He's the pointer. I guess I'm not sure what the proposal is. So that area. There. I don't know if we want it. Is you want what? Well, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it all roof. You can't. Oh yeah, it's because it's, because it's the gable end. <laughs> yeah, there. <Thank> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I said so. <laughs> so there, Commissioner Lavoy. <laughs> yeah, Commissioner Lavoy. Uh, the proposal, as it stands, is much in keeping with what we've approved and um, advised. Um, I. Um, the only two items that I have a problem with are the proposed floor tile mm -hmm. um, as being inconsistent with the guidelines. And the, uh, the little awning at the trellis just seems so out of place. Um, putting, uh, putting carriage lanterns on either side is fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I realize you sort of want to identify it as an opening and it's probably a better place for um, a sign, a flat sign, than a little tiny awning sort of tacked on to a pergola, which is a really odd place to put an awning. Okay. Is that it? There you go. you okay with the color of the awnings and the color of the board except for the tile? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just 
No, no, I'm, I'm, oh. at the end, I'm assuming okay. we'll get to have a yeah, discussion. You will. Okay. Commissioner Murray. <laughs> I have nothing to ask the Board of Works on it. I do, I do, do not want that. Okay. Commissioner Sharp, anything to add? I prefer the heavier timbers, as mm -hmm. Mr. Winnick uh, mentioned, was his favorite also. Uh, I also agree with the mountain bars and bifold bar mm -hmm. doors or windows. And I agree that that hanging and awning off of that wood timber is not at all appropriate. And I think a signage, some sign at that point, either hanging down or a part of the beam mm -hmm. system would be a much better way of identifying the entrance. Okay. Commissioner Boucher, anything to add? Well, I would just say that I agree with that comment because I think the one thing is Which? a sign there would identify that entrance. And I think could be uh, fitted into the space between the two mm -hmm. vertical posts, okay? Okay, great. Thank you. Commissioner Arias. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to compliment you on your presentation. It was very clear, precise, and easy mm. to follow, and I appreciate that. Thank and you. And I agree with what uh, Commissioner Sharp said regarding the um, timbers and the awning and all. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Okay, um, I am going to summarize the comments and then, um, actually you pretty much know what the comment is. Did you have something specifically you wanted to address? I would like to come back, thank you Mr. Chair, just to maybe clarify a couple of the points. So one, um, and I also was able to talk with the client and find out about uh, any concerns about the awning. So we'd be fine with not having the awning here at the entrance. Um, to the terrace, and that will come back with signage. And as you know, the signage is under a separate permit yep. anyhow. So that's fine. As long as we'll be able to identify the building, we're okay. So that will take that comment. Um, and then I think I just would like to ask the commissioner, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Lavoy. Commissioner Lavoy. Okay. Um, what you thought might be a better solution, if you would be happy to offer something on the, the um, um, tile uh, terrace paving, and, you know, we're open because, again, you know, one, I'll also preface that we'd be okay with having that as a detail that's solved later. Yeah. Um, but also, if you have any suggestions, it's always helpful for us. And I don't think it's really addressed in the guidelines, is it? Not, not as a paving mm -hmm. material, it, 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 it's not. But the, the use of the dots is uh -huh. a very contemporary flooring approach. And it probably is very yesterday. <laughs> um, at this point in their history. Unless you go to 17th century France. France. But <laughs> and that this is not I understand. I'm just having a little fun. that our ideal? Um, it, it would be better just um, probably um, the Vander Ashler mm -hmm. pattern. Or if it was a tone on tone. I think what I'm, I'm hearing is no, that. No. No dots at all. Just a. Okay. Um, I mean, a faux limestone sort of works. Mm hmm. Well, and I think then we're fine because that's in the same palette that we're in. Yeah. That's just a, to me, that's a pretty small detail. So All that's right, great. Then I'm Thanks. Summarize. So, yes. Mr. Yeah. Chair, you want me to make a motion? Do you want me to summarize the comment? No, because <laughs> I include them in the motion. Very well. You go right <laughs> ahead. If I miss one, then you can correct me, sir. <laughs> motion for final approval with the details to come back to consent calendar. Give me that again. Preliminary project design approval and final approval. Public display of affection? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> with Mrs. Gans's correction, <laughs> with the following conditions that the awning over the pergola entrance be removed, mm -hmm. to be, and the suggestion is to be replaced with a sign, that the paving material on the patio not have the decorative dots. The heavy timber um, verticals is preferred. Option C. Option C with with the lanterns. Mm -hmm. Okay. That the, with the lanterns. Mm -hmm. That the divided light windows in the bar are preferred. Perfect. Second. You're good. So we have a motion by Lavoy and a second by Boucher. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. You're on your way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We need to keep. We need to this. We need to keep. Uh,
this. That one. And you also need. We need that one. Plus this we need one that and one. that one. This one you don't need. We don't need that. Okay. And we need this. Yep. Uh, and do you want the material boards or the picture of the material boards? Um, it is the. Okay. Okay. You can have the material board. <laughs> and there's another one. I don't know where it is. Actually. Um. Hopefully you have it. Was that continued to be set for Daniel? Yes. Yeah. Correct. In, in um, well, th is there any, um, what you call it, jeopardy in doing it more than two weeks? No. So indefinite is like equivalent. Indefinite, and then just uh, submit a week before you, the meeting you want to get on to. Let me just ask. The However, these are pretty rapid, right? Right, just for consent. consent. So do you want me to do that in two weeks? Or do you want me to do it indefinitely? Yeah, I'm going to do it indefinitely. Yeah. Okay. Because I think it's going to be a little bit harder to get through the meeting if you're going to do it Sounds like we want the two weeks. Thank you. <laughs> That answered my question. <laughs> Great. I got it here. Took it off. Oh, That's great. Really, really nice presentation. Great. Thank you. You're moving the things in and changing this really helpful. All right. Well, thank you all. Have a great day. Don, do you want to take over for a second? <laughs> I brought the whole board. <laughs> like, I didn't have any samples, so I had to borrow the whole board. Okay, we're at eight. Next item is eighteen sixteen State Street, the Fiesta Inn and Suites. Would you introduce yourself, yourself, please? <laughs> My name is Brian Murphy. I'm the project architect. Okay. The uh, last time this was reviewed was on May 25th, and uh, have you been to the planning commission? Yes. And you've got to have. Planning commission. planning commission approval. Yes. And we've, we've been okay. here to the board a number of times. Um, yes. We had a couple of that we do know. What, <laughs> what is remaining? Uh, we had a couple of items uh, we were discussing, including um, the uh, relationship of the arch at the tower to, mm -hmm. in, in terms of its size, to the arch below and to the overall mass of the tower and um, so I've, I, I increased the, the size of that arch um, there was some uh, feeling that it was too small there were some questions also about um, whether the the uh, balcony should extend beyond the, the uh, archway the edges of the archway or um, whether they should be um, captured by it um, so I'm exploring it in both ways and what is the depth of the plaster return it's about a foot and a half. All right, 18 inches. Okay. And um, and in the uh, with the uh, with the balcony uh, extending beyond, I, I brought that way back. We we were coming beyond here quite a bit with the uh, little um, uh, handlebar mustache. <laughs> Paired that back yep. a little, gave that a little trim. Um, um, and um, our preferred solution was was to let that project just the, the six inches beyond what Mr. Lavoie has had suggested. Um, also studying um, uh, dropping the head height of the, the uh, what are uh, existing bathroom windows here on that uh, front elevation and uh, studying a couple of different ways of, of doing either a, a, uh, a screen over those windows or um, a, a more simplified reha. design questions that we okay. have left. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to uh, address this project? Seeing none, we'll bring it back for questions. Mr. Drury, you have any questions? Not yet. <laughs> Mr. Lavoie? 
Um, AQA then is your preferred solution? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Murray? Ms. Boucher? Ms. Arias? Hi. Okay. Comments? Do you mind just reading some of the minutes from last time just so that we just get a little? The site elevation is acceptable, I believe these are them, as proposed on sheet A to B. Scheme B is preferred. Restudy the Reyes window to not crowd the eave or change the rails to a plaster grill. It is too elaborate as proposed. Further study the proportion of the tower. Perhaps the arch on the second floor above the main entry needs to be reproportioned. Re Redesign the wrought iron on the second floor arched opening in the tower to not extend more than six inches beyond the sides of the arch <coughs> or to be contained within the arch. Study balancing the fenestration of the State Street elevation. And lastly, perhaps more stone above the keystone on the main entry would be more successful. I forgot about that. I did actually raise this up. The keystone was actually touching the right. Right. grass there. A lot of little space between those. Comments? Oh. Mr. Chair, sorry, I don't want to make a comment, and I'm not a commissioner, but I do have a question of the applicant. Brian, um, on the final approval submittal checklist, I don't see a check mark for the SWIMP. The MPs, are they on the plans? They are. That's that okay. sheet. Terrific. Thank you. Mr. Drury. Um, my comment, uh, I much prefer um, AQA also. Um, I think that the, the lights on the um, sandstone should be bigger. There's, they seem a little lost in that in that field of sandstone. They could be a little more, um, depending on how they're how they're made. They could be a little more emphatic. But it's a much much simpler and much more um, much more flowing design. Very nice. Thank you, Commissioner Lavoy. Mr. Drury's comments. Um, I, I I think the drawings are ready for design approval but they are not a complete set of drawings. We need more detailing on the, what this tower is actually going to get built like. Um, so I'd recommend um, that if you're comfortable, Mr. Sharp, that they come back to the consent. That's acceptable with me. Ms. Murray? Uh, nothing to add. I concur with those comments. Ms. Arias? I concur with the comments also. And, well, and I lastly, like, I would but like not to least. say something other than what I'm going to say, <laughs> but I concur with the comments. <laughs> you've done this for quite a while here, and I think you've done a good job. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, actually, they, he, they received project design approval on April 13th. So he's here for final approval, and since you feel it needs more details, then today you will just be continuing it to consent for final approval. Yes. Okay. Because these are not complete. So moved. Second. I have a quick comment. <laughs> I never have understood that little thing that occurs there and there. We've never talked about it. I don't know how thick it is, how deep it is. It's again about that 18 inch depth. And it doesn't relate to this, but you know, it, it's it's a nice way to blend the tower into the roof. So I, I, I don't know. Correct. The question is, should it even be there? Too detailed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. We've had. Uh, a motion to continue it to uh, consent. Two weeks, Brian, is that? Okay. In two weeks with final details and final working drawings. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
Meeting adjourned. Yeah, I mean it's it's.